Coach, this is the game that everyone has been talking about for weeks. Well, Jim, this is one of the biggest college games of the decade, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping for the best. Game ...that has attracted as much national attention as this Spartan Irish football game. Well, Jim, I, I've been in college coaching about 17 years, and gosh, I don't know of any game that I've ever been in as a coach or as a player that has just uh, had so much interest. We've had newspaper men uh, on our campus here for the last week and a half, even before the Michigan State game, and I know Duffy's had a great group uh, up there on his own campus, and uh, gosh, it's been quite a, quite a week and a half, I'll tell you that, and uh, I don't know of any game that really has had more interest in this one. There's no question that Michigan State is an extremely talented football team. What do you expect them to try to do on Notre Dame? Well, Jim, I'll tell you, one of the strong uh, points uh, about this Michigan State football team is the great balance that it has. As a matter of fact, offensively, I think that they're better balanced than they were a year ago. I think in ends, uh, Alan Brenner and, of course, uh, the great Gene Washington, uh, I think they have more speed than they had last year. Washington was uh, playing a year ago, and a boy by the name of Probstel, who isn't quite as fast as Brenner. And, of course, in the backfield, fellows like Lee and Clinton Jones and Baba Pisa and, and Ray, and I just figure that uh, they probably will continue with the same sort of attack that they've had. And Michigan State's defense speaks for itself. They've uh, been a tremendous defensive football team for the past four or five years. And I imagine that they will continue with the same formula that has brought them 19 victories in the last 20 starts. Yeah, that's not a bad record, is it? It sure Ter certainly isn't. I'd, I'd like to have the same kind. <laughs> okay, Coach. Terry Hanratty, of course, your fine quarterback, has had an outstanding year. Do you think that uh, he'll get a, a harder pass rush from Michigan State than he's had in some of the other games? Oh, I'm sure that he'll get a heavy pass rush. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that uh, Terry, uh, of course, uh, is going to expect in this ball game, and one of the things that Michigan State does well is, is, is rush the passer. So uh, we hope that we're ready for it. All right, we'll have more on the nation's college football in just a moment. Coach, when most people talk about Michigan State's quarterback, Jimmy Ray, uh, they think of him as a runner, and he is a fine runner. He's carried 101 times, which is uh, certainly above average for any quarterback. Uh, but looking at his passing record, that's not bad either. He's completed 55 of 103 for 968 yards, and that's just a little behind your quarterback. Well, Jim, that's exactly right. As a matter of fact, I pointed that out earlier in the week. I was aware of it, and of course I had read uh, prior to our... Uh, starting to study the Michigan State offense, that he had been uh, a very ordinary passer. Well, after I got the film and started to study it, and also the statistics, I'm convinced he's probably one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country. Not only can he run well, which the statistics indicate, he also has got a wonderful passing completion record. And as I watch the film, he, uh, he just bites off yardage in great big chunks, and, uh, and really, has, every time they get in a jam, by golly, this little Ray comes back and throws that ball. Now, he also has done this. He's gone back and not found receivers open, and he takes off with that ball. He's a great scrambler, tremendous speed, and I think that's why I said that I think that their offense probably is a little bit more versatile and even more dangerous than a year ago. Is there any one factor, if you could point to a single factor in this football game, that you think might influence uh, the outcome of the game more than any other point might? Well, Jim, that's a very difficult question. I don't know that there's any one factor. I, I personally feel that like, this is two real good football teams going against one another. Um, the one thing that I'm impressed by in the Michigan State uh, attack, and of course also defense, is a tremendous team speed that they uh, have in all phases of the game. Uh, I just think, like, I, the way I feel about it, and I think I made this example, uh, drew this example during the course of the week, I think it's maybe like Dempsey and Tooney going against one another again. And two pretty doggone good fighters, and this is two pretty doggone good football teams playing one another, and I think the breaks in the ball game could determine the outcome. Well, in Clinton Jones, uh, the halfback from Michigan State, they've got one of the finest runners in the uh, in collegiate football. He's rushed for 751 yards, 771 yards, I should say, for an average of 5.1. And Notre Dame's Nick Eddy has rushed for 498 yards for an average of 7.4. How would you compare these two runners? Well, I think they favor, uh, they compare favorably, Jim. Uh, uh, both boys are outstanding runners. I think Jim's, uh, I mean, I should say um, Nick Eddy's uh, statistics are a little bit misleading in a sense because he has, uh, the statistics do not bear out the number of punt returns uh, and kickoff returns, I should say, uh, that Nick has had. Uh, he's broken two of them for us, and he's had several long uh, pass receptions. So his yardage is excellent for us. And uh, Clinton Jones, too, of course, has been the mainstay in this Michigan State attack for about three years now. And I would say that the fans are going to get to see two of the fine runners in uh, collegiate football today. 
Coach, the Michigan State uh, big defensive end, Bubba Smith, has sometimes switched to middle guard. Do you attach any special significance to that move? Well, Jim, they uh, really use a multiple defense. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know of any football team that we've ever scouted or played against that has the multiple aspect and also the personnel changes. For example, they'll operate out of a four-man line, a five-man line, five men down with an even look, a six-man line, and of course they'll take their personnel and shift it around. This is, this is one of the things that has made uh, uh, this Michigan State team difficult to move the ball on with any degree of consistency. Bubba Smith has played end, he's played tackle, he's played over the guards, he's played over the center at one time. Uh, and you never know where he's going to be, and of course we have to be prepared for any situation, and I'll say one thing, that this, this team, uh, the Michigan State team, has one of the most I think uh, that was the toughest defense that we've ever played against, and uh, of course they demonstrated this a year ago, and it's going to be a tough one to attack. Well, Coach, in moving Bubba into the center, uh, do you think he's a, a tougher there, or is he a tougher as a defensive end? Well, <laughs> I, I, I said during the course of the week uh, that uh, regardless of where he's playing, that you're aware of his presence, and cer certainly by his size and his weight, and whether he plays over the middle or whether he plays at end, I'll say this, that uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a tough football player that he has to be contended with. I, I suppose he'd be more familiar with the end position because that's where he's played more often, but uh, in any eventuality, we know that he's going to be there and we're going to have to cope with him. Well, Coach, in just a few minutes, you'll be playing Michigan State. Certainly, best of luck to you, regardless of the outcome. I know that fans all over the country are really, really looking forward to this football game. Thank you very much, Jim. Hi everybody, this is Jim Morris with Frank Sweeney at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, where undefeated Notre Dame meets undefeated Michigan State. Today's game is brought to you by B.F. Goodrich, the straight talk tire people, and by State Farm Mutual, the world's largest car insurance company. seems to agree that this is the dream game of the century. Notre Dame is ranked number one in the country, and the Spartans are in the number two position. Both teams are undefeated, and even if the above were not factors, this rivalry between Michigan State and Notre Dame has grown to tremendous proportions. Anytime these two teams get together on a football field, anything can happen and usually does. Both teams are solid offensively and defensively. Notre Dame's first string defense has allowed the opposition only one touchdown in eight games, and the offense has averaged 37.6 points per game. Michigan State has allowed its opponents 9.9 .9 points a game and scored an average of 31.4 points a game. And as I said a moment ago, it all adds up to the game of the century. And now let's go down to the field for our national anthem. our national anthem under the, under the direction of Leonard Falcone. Well, the weather here at Spartan Stadium is cloudy and cold with a temperature at 33 degrees. The wind from the northeast at 8 miles per hour, and that should not be much of a factor this afternoon. 
The field is dry and in good condition, and we expect no rain. And now here to bring you all the latest color and the starting lineups for this big football game is my broadcast partner, Frank Sweeney. Thanks, Jim. Well, this is a game that everybody's been looking forward to, a game that probably has never been matched before in history. This is Happy Birthday, Merry Christmas, New Year's Eve, the Mardi Gras, all rolled into one. It's a packed house, and they're all ready for the excitement that will naturally go with a game such as this. For Michigan State, the starting offensive lineup will go something as follows. At left end, for the Spartans, number 86, Alan Brenner. He's from Niles. He's 196 in weight, stands 6 feet 1, 18 years old, a sophomore. At left tackle for Michigan State, Joe Prisbicki, wearing number 79, from Detroit. He is 239 pounds, 6 feet 1, 20 years old, and he is a junior. At left guard, Tony Conti, number 67, in his green shirt this afternoon. And that cheer in the background is for the partisan Notre Dame fans greeting their squad as they come on the field. Larry Smith, is from uh, Chicago St. Rita High School, 194 pounds, 6 feet 1, 20 years old. He's a junior. At right guard from Essexville, Michigan, 201 pounds, Dave Teklin, wearing number 68 today, 5'11", 19-year-old junior. At right tackle for Michigan State, Jerry West, 214 pounds, wearing number 77. He's from Durand, stands 5'11", is 21 years old, and he is a senior. At right end will be a fellow that we expect to hear his name mentioned quite often this afternoon, one Gene Washington. Washington wears number 84. He stands 6 feet 3, weighs 219 pounds. He is a senior from LaPorte, Texas. At quarterback, a real scat back, a real fast little guy, Jimmy Ray, weighs 171. He will wear number 16. He's 5 feet 10, 20 years old, just a junior, from Fayetteville, North Carolina. At left halfback, Dwight Lee, number 34, 194 pounds, 6 feet 2, 20-year-old junior from New Haven. At right halfback, Clinton Jones, 201 pounds, 6 feet even, 21-year-old senior. He weighs in at 201 pounds and will wear number 26. At fullback, a sophomore from Detroit, Regis Cavender, 5'10", 19 years old, weighs 185. That is the starting lineup for Michigan State today. I'll have the Notre Dame lineup in a moment. Right now, here's a thought for you from B.F. Goodrich. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Now for the number one team in the nation, the University of Notre Dame. Split end, Jim Seymour, a healthy Jim Seymour we trust today. Six feet four, 205 pounds, 19-year-old sophomore from Berkeley, Michigan. At left tackle will be Paul Seiler. Seiler wearing number 71, as is usual. He's 6'4", 235, 20-year-old senior from Algona, Iowa. At left guard will be Tom Regner wearing number 76. Regner is 6 feet 1, 245 pounds, 22 years old, a senior from Kenosha, Wisconsin. At center for the Fighting Irish, as usual, will be George Gedeke, a senior from Detroit, 6 feet 3, 228 pounds, 21-year-old senior. And at the right guard will be Dick Swatland. Swatland today, also as usual, will wear number 59. He's 6'2", 225, 20-year-old senior from Stamford, Connecticut. At right tackle will be Bob Kuchenberg. Kuchenberg today will wear number 75, 6'2", 225, 18-year-old sophomore from Hobart, Indiana. At the tight end will be Don Gemitter. Gemitter is 6'2", 210 pounds, 20-year-old senior from Pittsburgh. At quarterback, of course, Terry Hanratty. The great star of the Fighting Irish this year who's given him a passing attack that is really something from Butler, Pennsylvania. The 18-year-old sophomore who stands 6'1 and weighs 190 pounds. At left halfback will be Nick Eddy, everybody's All-American. Nick, of course, is from California. He claims Lafayette, California, and Tracy, California, giving them equal time. Six feet even, 195, 22-year-old senior. At the right halfback will be Bob Blyer. Blyer? A junior from Appleton, Wisconsin, 5'11", 185, 20 years old. And at fullback will be Larry Conjar. 
Kanjar, six feet even, 212 pounds, 20-year-old senior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. That is the starting lineup for the Fighting Irish. The Irish won the toss. They have elected to receive. They will defend the goal to our right, the south goal. Michigan State will be kicking off and moving from our left toward our right. Michigan State this afternoon in white football pants, green helmets, green jerseys, big white numerals. The Fighting Irish in their traveling white jerseys, blue numerals, gold pants. It's a crisp afternoon, 33 degrees. It's going to be a dandy head-knocking football game. We're sure of that. The number one team in the nation, the number one, two team in the nation, and your number one sportscaster for ABC, Jim Morris. Thank you very much, Frank Sweeney. The officials for this afternoon's game, the referee is Howard Wirtz. The umpire is Bob Kepler. The headlinesman is William Makepeace. The field judge, Ed Bronson. And the backfield judge is Jerry Mark Britt. As Frank told you, Notre Dame won the toss, elected to receive. They'll defend the goal to our right, which is the south goal. Michigan State will kick off and defend the goal to our left, which is the north goal as we sit on the left, on the west side of the field, high in the press box. Dick Kenny, number 42, will be kicking off for Michigan State. Going back deep for Notre Dame, in the center is Rocky Blyer. On his right is Quinn, and on his left, Bob Gladjo. And this football game is just about to get under the way. People have called it the dream game of the century. And in my long association with football, I can't think of any game that has ever attracted the national attention as this game has. Dick Kenny at the 40. And he's ready. There's the kick. High end over end being taken by Conjar at the 14-yard line. Back to the 15, 20, and to the 27-yard line. Larry Conjar, the fullback. Into the ball game now comes Terry Hanratty. Notre Dame will have first down, 10 yards to go from their own 27-yard line. Jerry Jones made that tackle for Michigan State. Conjar and Gladio are the setbacks. Nick Eddy is not in the football game at the moment. Terry Hanratty, the quarterback, first and 10 from the 26. Larry Conjar over the 30-yard line to the 31 or 2. That Notre Dame lineup now is Seymour, Seiler, Regner, Gedeke, Swatland, Kuchenberg, and Gemitter. In the backfield, Terry Hanratty, Bob Gladjo, Larry Conjar, and Rocky Blyer. That tackle for Michigan State was made by Bailey and Galinaw. A gain of four yards on the play. The ball at the Notre Dame 31. Gladjo and Seymour are to the right. Second and six. And off goes to the right halfback, and he's up to the 35-yard line. Number 28, Bob Blyer. He's tackled by George Webster, right just shy of the 35-yard line. Defensively now for Michigan State, we have Bubba Smith, Chuck Bailey, Pat Galinaw, Jeff Richardson, Nick Jordan, and Phil Hoy. The linebackers are Charlie Thornhill and George Webster. And in the secondary, we have Summers, Phillips, and Armstrong. It's third down and about two at the 35. Quarterback sneak by Hanratty. He's over the 40 to the 45-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. Tackle made by Jess Phillips. Jim, they're not double-teaming Seymour, but I noticed that uh, Phil Hoig is really giving him a hard check on the line of scrimmage. Uh, of course, Seymour hasn't been going for any passes so far, but that's an indication of what we can expect, checking the ends at the line before they can make a move downfield. Notre Dame has moved from their own 27-yard line to their own 45, where they have first down, 10 yards to go. And ready the quarterback. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Conjar, over left tackle, and he's to the 49-yard line. Jeff Richardson makes the stop for Michigan State. Notre Dame apparently trying to establish that ground attack here early in the football game against that fine Michigan State defense. Gain of four yards on that last play by fullback Larry Conjar. It's now second and six. The ball at the 49-yard line of Notre Dame as Seymour and Gladjo go to the right. Hanratty calls the signals. It's the fullback, Conjar, right up the center. He's over the 50-yard line to about the 49, where he's tackled by big Bubba Smith. All 6'7", 283 pounds. A senior from Beaumont, Texas. Big Bubba. Gain of a yard on the play. It's third and five. The ball just inside Michigan State territory. Seymour goes to the right along with Gladjo. The running backs, Larry Conjar and Rocky Blyer. Third and five. It's the draw play to Blyer, and he's stopped. Back 
at his own 47-yard line by Jeff Richardson. That'll be fourth down, Notre Dame. The ball now at their own 47-yard line, and that'll bring in the kicking team. We expect this to be a game of defenses, and Michigan State has shown theirs in the opening moments. Kevin Hardy is back to kick for Notre Dame. Brenner back to receive for Michigan State. Hardy gets the kick away. It's a beauty. High spiral taken at the 13-yard line by Brenner. And he's brought down by Gladjo back at the 11-yard line on a beautiful defensive play by Bob Gladjo. a new one. We haven't seen it this year. Kevin Hardy back to punt for Notre Dame. A left-footed boomer and moves the ball back to the 11-yard line of Michigan State. There are 11 minutes and 13 seconds remaining here in the first period of play. For Michigan State, that front seven, a 40-yard kick that time by Kevin Hardy. Time in now for State Farm Mutual. When play is resumed, Michigan State will have control of the football. First down, 10 yards to go from their own 11-yard line. Offensively for the Spartans, the left end is Al Brenner. The left tackle, Joe Presbicki. The left guard is Tony Cotty. The center, Larry Smith. The right guard, Dave Teklin. At right tackle is Jerry West. And at right end, Gene Washington. In the backfield, Jimmy Ray, Dwight Lee, Regis Cavender, and Clint Jones. First and 10 from the 11. Jimmy Ray keeps the ball himself, and he's knocked down immediately behind the line of scrimmage by John Horney at the nine-yard line. Defensively for Notre Dame, we have Tom Rhodes, Pete Duranko, Kevin Hardy, and Alan Page, the front four. The linebackers are John Fergine, Jim Lynch, John Horney, and Dave Martin. In the secondary, we have Tom O'Leary, Tom Shane, and Jim Smithberger. A loss of two on the play. It's second down and 11, the ball at the Michigan State nine. We said it would be a head-knocking football game, and that's exactly what it is, Jim. Second down, back to you. Out of the huddle comes Michigan State with second and 11 at their own nine-yard line. Jimmy Ray, the quarterback. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He looks, and he fumbles the football. It's recovered by Michigan State back at the four-yard line. Alan Page had a great deal to do with that fumble because he actually knocked the ball loose to Jimmy, and Jimmy had a fall on it there. Regis Cavender, the fullback. Recovered that ball for Michigan State on his own four-yard line. He's in the ball game, replacing Bob Apisa at fullback. Dave Teklin in at right guard. Pruitt comes out. Apparently, Duffy Doherty calling the plays here for the Spartans. It's third down, 17 yards to go. The ball at the four-yard line of Michigan State as the Spartans are now out of the huddle. Flag on the play. Delay a game against Michigan State. Being the type of a ball game it is with this type of crowd, Jim, we already can see that they're going to cheer no matter what happens. There's going to be partisanship cheering, and they're right down there in front of a great bunch of uh, Notre Dame students, so anything going against Michigan State right here now is going to draw their, uh, their chorus. And Jimmy Lynch, the Notre Dame captain, calls the defensive signals. It's Michigan State's ball, third and 19 from their own two-yard line. Jimmy Ray calls the signals. Option play. He keeps the football. He's got it. He's out outside the five to the seven yard line and knocked down by Tom O'Leary. And we have another penalty marker on the play. It's a clip against Michigan State. Undoubtedly, at this point, Notre Dame will decline because it'll be a fourth down and still a long yardage. The ball is at the eight. As you might expect, these teams are so keyed up that the uh, adrenaline has to be running at a high rate down there. This is the kind of a game that uh, has everyone's attention. People were vying for tickets to get in here. They would do almost anything for the tickets. I'd like to pass along the word, though, that uh, one of the most interesting things about getting tickets was a good friend of ours, Wally Phillips, a disc jockey back in Chicago, had some tickets through a good friend, Bill Randall, down in South Bend, who has Randall's in the spot for a lot of fans. And he gave away through his broadcast. So they're there today. Notre Dame refuses the penalty. It'll be fourth and 14. Kenny in to kick now for Michigan State. Tom Shane back deep at, the, at his 50, at the 50-yard line. There's the kick. It's the way. It's rather short. Bounces at the 45 into Notre Dame territory. It's going to go all the way down to the 40-yard line. Now inside the 40 to the 38. A good kick that time by Dick Kenny. It was rather short, but... Shane could not get up to it, so he had to let it bounce, and it took a fine Michigan State bounce and traveled 54 yards. So 
Notre Dame will have the football. First down, 10 yards to go from their own 38-yard line as Terry Hanratty comes back in the football game. And now here's Frank Sweeney for B.F. Goodrich. Notre Dame has the football, first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. Nick Eddy, the great Notre Dame halfback, has seen no action thus far, and I guess we can tell the story now. Yesterday, getting off the train here in East Lansing, Nick did slip and fall and re-injured his right shoulder. We were told before the football game that he would not start. However, he is expected to see action this afternoon. He's being replaced, of course, by sophomore Bob Gladjo from Louisville, Ohio. Just a sophomore, 19 years old, 5'11", 185. Notre Dame out of the huddle with Gladjo to the right. It's first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. Seymour is to the left. There's the snap. Hanratty goes back to pass. He throws. And it's incomplete at the 45-yard line. The pass is intended for Rocky Blyer. Defending on the play was number 39, Drake Garrett. So with eight minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter, we have no score. Second down and 10. Notre Dame's ball at their own 38. Gladjo to the right, Seymour to the left. And Raddy, the quarterback. Blyer, one of the setbacks. It's a screen pass, incomplete, intended for Blyer at his 30-yard line. Screen pass to the right that time, intended for Rocky Blyer. It was incomplete. Good defensive coverage over there by Michigan State. They reacted very well to that screen pass. Bubba Smith had the pressure on him, coming in there with those big arms of his plate in the air, but the pass just couldn't hit the mark. So here we go again, third down and 10. The Fighting Irish and Jim Morse. Big play for Notre Dame at their own 38-yard line. Blyer comes to the left, Seymour to the right, and now Gladjo goes into the slot at, on the right side. And Raddy calls the signal. He goes back to pass. He's being rushed. He gets away from one tackler. He now throws, and it's complete to Gladjo at the 36-yard line of Michigan State. He's tackled immediately down there by Jess Phillips. Beautiful work by Gladio that time. The sophomore was being guarded along the sidelines. Saw the pass was going to be a little bit short. Saw it before his defender did. Came back about a step and a half and pulled it in at the 36. 26 yards on the play going from Hanratty to Gladio. It's first and 10. Irish at the Michigan State 36-yard line. As Seymour and Blyer come to the left side. Hanratty calls the signals. Hands the ball to Gladio. And he's to the 35-yard line. A gain of a yard on the play. He's knocked down by Pat Gallinaw. Also in on the tackle over there, big linebacker George Webster. 6'4", senior, 218 pounds. Anderson, South Carolina. Well, so far this uh, football game has been played in the Michigan State half of this football field, Jim. The Spartans haven't been able to move. The Irish have maintained the ball for the most of the period. Second down, nine. The ball just outside the Michigan State 35-yard line. Seymour is split to the left. Hanratty gets the ball. He goes back to pass. He's going to run around the right side now. He cuts inside the 35 and is knocked down at the 33-yard line. Chuck Thornhill making the tackle for Michigan State. Thornhill, the left side linebacker. Game of about two on the play. It'll be third and seven. The ball now at the 33-yard line of State. Six minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the first quarter. As Jim Seymour splits to the left, Blyer is in the slot to the left side. And Raddy gets the ball, rolls to his left, he throws, and it is incomplete. Intended for Rocky Blyer at the 25, a fine defensive play by Jess Phillips. Question is now whether or not Notre Dame will attempt a field goal. There's a flag, I see, on the far side of the field now, discussing that play with... Referee Howard Wirtz is George Gedeke of Notre Dame and George Webster of Michigan State. We have no official indication now as all of the officials get in on the huddle. Illegal procedure penalty against Notre Dame. We have no march off as yet. It's being discussed again now. It's 
declined by Michigan State. Illegal procedure against Notre Dame is declined by Michigan State. So it'll be fourth down and seven with the ball at the Michigan State 33-yard line. Scoreboard hasn't changed. And the uh, Michigan State squad asking the officials about that, but it's now it's changed to fourth and seven. Timeout is being called by Notre Dame as Kevin Hardy comes in. Notre Dame's football with fourth down, seven yards to go at the Michigan State 33-yard line. Terry Hanratty goes to the sideline now to talk to Coach Eric Farsegan. Kevin Hardy is in the ball game, apparently to kick for Notre Dame. Going back deep, number 39 is Drake Garrett for Michigan State. Now Notre Dame goes back in the huddle once again. You know, Jim, this football game is so high in everybody's mind. Everybody keyed up for this game. It was refreshing last night to see in the uh, Jack Tar Hotel downtown a scene that we haven't witnessed for many, many a year where the uh, hotel itself was packed wall to wall. In recent years, people seem to be driving in and tailgating their lunch, and uh, you don't see them in the hotels, you see them at the game. But they were in them in great numbers there last night, as they are here today. Let's go back to the action. Kevin Hardy standing at the 47-yard line of Michigan State to kick the football. There's the snap. It's low. He catches it on first bounce. He's going to run with it. Now he throws it. Complete to no one down at the 10-yard line. Of course, we're going to have several people. The flag on the play. All of the Michigan, all of the Notre Dame linemen, of course, were downfield. That will be ineligible receiver downfield will be called against Notre Dame. That pass from center was caught on first bounce by Kevin Hardy. Gedicke limps as he goes off the field on the far side. He's out. That will be a blow for Notre Dame. The penalty against Notre Dame is declined, so Michigan State will take over. First down, 10 yards to go from their own 33. High formation. Clinton Jones, the deep man in the eye. Jimmy Ray, the quarterback. There's the snap. The handoff goes to the fullback, and he's knocked down immediately at the line of scrimmage by Jimmy Lynch. Dwight Lee was the ball carrier to the 34. Gain of a yard on the play, so it'll be second and nine. The ball at the 34 of Michigan State. George Gedicke is over on the sidelines now taking some snaps. Michigan State out of the huddle with second and nine at their own 34. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, goes to his right. He wants to throw. He completes it at the 40-yard line and rolling on to the 45-yard line goes Dwight Lee. The tackle is made by John Horney and Jim Lynch. Down, Michigan State. That's the first first down for Michigan State so far, Jim. Five minutes and 43 seconds remain in the first quarter. The ball is right at the Michigan State 45 yard line. Out of the huddle now come the Spartans. There's the snap. Dwight Lee keeps the football over right tackle. He's to the 50 and down to the Notre Dame 46 yard line. The tackle is made by John Pergine. Little Jimmy Ray, going into this football game, had carried the ball 101 times, good for 361 yards. Quite a ball carrier for a quarterback. A gain of eight on that last play. It's second and two, the ball at the Notre Dame 47. There's the snap. It's Ray again. Same play, but he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Jim Lynch right there to put the clamp on him. The way these defenses are working so far this afternoon, Jim, I think it's going to be the ball club that gets something rolling, gets a little uh, motion going that's going to be able to push on for that first score at least. Third down and two, the ball at the Notre Dame 47-yard line. The Spartans got a break a moment ago when the, the center could not get the ball back to punter Kevin Hardy. He got it to him on first bounce. It's third and two at the Notre Dame 47. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, rolls to his left. He looks to throw, and he's knocked down. It's incomplete. John Pergine in there along with John Horney. So Michigan State will have a decision to make here with fourth down, two yards to go at the Notre Dame 47-yard line. Quick decision is made. Dick Kenny coming into the ball game to boot it. Have you noticed that Kenny keeps his shoe on when he punts, but when he kicks off or tries for point after, that's when he kicks the barefooted style. Tom Shane going back deep for Notre Dame. Kenny standing at his own 39-yard line. 
There's the snap. It's a good one. And the kick is away. It's very high, but very short. Tom Sheen calls for the fair catch, and he's knocked down. There'll be a penalty against Michigan State. Interfering with the fair catch, I'm sure, will be the call. We'll have to wait, of course, officially. And a reminder that your host for the Notre Dame football season, as always, B.F. Goodrich, the Straight Talk Tire people, and State Farm Mutual, the world's largest car insurance company. Well, perhaps I spoke too soon here. It was an indication against Notre Dame. Now, however, it's being discussed back and forth. Now an indication goes against Michigan State. Interference with the fair catch. 15 yards against Michigan State. Moves the ball to the 35-yard line. You know, Jim, we get a lot of telegrams, through, and I'll talk about that later. They're back to action. You take it. Tim Monty is in at center for Notre Dame, replacing Gedeke. It's first and ten Irish from the 35. And off goes to the fullback, Larry Conjar, over left tackle. He's out to the 38-yard line. And Shane, or check that, Coley O'Brien is in at quarterback for Notre Dame. Oh, of course, the natural question there is what has happened to Terry Hanratty? Coley O'Brien in for Notre Dame. It's second down. Eight yards to go. Notre Dame from their own 37-yard line. As O'Brien is under the center. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He throws. And it is incomplete. At the 50-yard line, the pass was intended for Rocky Blyer. Defending on the play was Jess Phillips. O'Brien threads his needle perfectly. He had that right between the two defenders, but Rocky just couldn't hold on to it. Jim... You go ahead. I'm going to take a look across the way and see if I can find out what's going with Hanratty. All right, Frank. It's third down, eight yards to go. Notre Dame from their own 38-yard line. Tim Monty in its center, replacing George Gedeke, who apparently is out with an ankle or leg injury. All right, Gladjo goes to the right side. Jim Seymour is split to the left. Coley O'Brien is the quarterback. He calls the signals. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He's being rushed. He throws. It's complete. Out here to Gladjo. However, he's dropped right at the 35-yard line. There's a penalty marker on the play. Personal foul being called against Notre Dame. The ball is at the 35-yard line. And the penalty being discussed with George Webster. And the penalty is declined by Michigan State. It'll be fourth down now with the ball at the 35-yard line. Fourth and 10. Kevin Hardy standing at his own 20-yard line to kick the football. Last time he got a bad snap, and he gets a rather low one this time. However, he gets it, gets the boot away, and it's a good one. Long spiral. Fair catch call for back at the 27-yard line by Phillips. Let's pause now. Ten seconds for station identification. <laughs> a 38-yard kick on that last play by Kevin Hardy. Michigan State's football at their own 27, first and 10. Dwight Lee, Regis Cavender, and Clint Jones in the backfield. Jimmy Ray, the quarterback, there's the snap. Ray goes back to pass, plenty of time, throws long downfield to Washington, and he's got it at the 30-yard line of Notre Dame. Gene Washington. Going into this football game, Washington had caught 22, good for 554 yards. And he just caught a 43-yard beauty, bringing that ball down to the Notre Dame 31-yard line. A high-lofting, looping kind of a pass that he just got right under between the two defenders. First and ten. Back to you, Jim. Out of the huddle now with Jimmy Ray calling for quiet. First and ten at the Notre Dame 31. The handoff goes to Clinton Jones over right tackle, and he stopped at the 26-yard line. Jim Lynch, John Horney making a stop for Notre Dame. Gain of five yards on the play. 
The way these two defenses have been neutralizing each other, I just figured that something had to bomb here almost any minute. That was it. Second and five. Back to you. The ball is at the 26th of Notre Dame with second and five. Jimmy Ray. The quarterback hands the ball to Clinton Jones. He's hit one time, gets away from one tackler, piles away from two, and makes it down to the 21-yard line. Dave Martin and John Pergine make the stop for Notre Dame. And we're going to have a measurement. Great recovery that time. Jimmy Lynch hit him really solid. One minute, 37 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And we're going to have a measurement. Should be very close. Clinton Jones has carried two times in a row now for 10 yards. Into the ball game comes Pruitt at guard, replacing Dave Teklin. Just a little bit short of that first down. The ball is at about the 21 and a half yard line. I think we have to remember that Michigan State possesses a fine field goal kicker in the barefoot Hawaiian Dick Kenny. However, it'll be third down to about one now with the ball at the 21 and a half of Notre Dame. There's the whistle from referee Howard Wirtz, and we're ready to go. Third and one. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. He keeps it himself. He's brought down as he tries right tackle, and he is very close to the first down. Tom Rhodes making the stop along with John Horney, and getting up off the bottom is Pete Duranko. And we'll have another measurement. Listen to this word now from B.F. Goodrich. Dave Teklin comes in with a play from Duffy Doherty. The measurement was short. They lack about a foot of the first down. It's fourth and less than a yard to go. Michigan State. Out of the huddle they come and they will not attempt a field goal. In that backfield we have Jones, Cavender, and Lee. Along with quarterback Jimmy Ray. It's fourth down, less than a foot. The ball at the Notre Dame 21 yard line. Jimmy Ray on the quarterback sneak. He's got the first down inside the 20. quarterback on a quarterback sneak was stopped by Jim Lynch. However, not before he got the first down. Into the ball game comes Pruitt now at right guard replacing Dave Teklin. There's 50 seconds remaining here in the first quarter as Michigan State comes out of the huddle with a first and 10. The ball just inside the Notre Dame 20 yard line. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. It's the option to the right. He's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. John Pergine, Tom Rhodes, Kevin Hardy, and Pete Duranko all in on the stop for Notre Dame. A quarterback keep by Ray that got Michigan State the first down was a, an excellent uh, choice of play, Jim, because uh, Notre Dame had gone heavy on the left side. Jimmy uh, Lynch was actually backing up the line on the left side, and there was a nice big gap over center, which Ray called, and he picked up the yardage. Just 11 seconds, 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score. Back to Jim Morris. Out of the huddle come the Spartans with second down and 10. The ball just inside the Notre Dame 20 yard line. The whistle blows. And let's see what we have. That's the end of the first quarter with the score Notre Dame nothing and Michigan State nothing. Second quarter action just about to get underway here from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Jim Morris along with Frank Sweeney bringing you all the action between the Spartans of Michigan State and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Michigan State has the football when play is resumed. Second down 10. The ball just inside the Notre Dame 20-yard line. The big play in this Michigan State drive was a 42-yard pass completion from quarterback Jimmy Ray to right end Gene Washington. Michigan State now out of the huddle. Second down, 10 yards to go. We'll call it the 19-yard line of Notre Dame. Ray calls the signal, gets the ball, hands it off to number 25, his fullback, Cavender, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Regis Cavender, just a sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, is tackled by Jim Smithberger. But it's first down. I believe, no, we're going to have a measurement. Very close once again. 
Well, Jim, if history repeats itself, Notre Dame on several occasions has been scored upon only to seem to fight back all the harder to realize they're uh, down in points and come back charging. Perhaps that's what will happen here should Michigan State go on to score. Michigan State does pick up the first down. First and ten at the nine-and-a-half-yard line. First down, goal to go. Michigan State, the ball at the nine-yard line of Notre Dame. Out of the will come the Spartans. In that backfield, we have Lee, Cavender, and Jones. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Cavender over left tackle. He's inside the five-yard line. The tackle made by Smithberger and Page and Lynch. But not before Cavender picks up five yards. Duffy isn't missing a piece when he's got a fullback in there like Cavender who can bull his way the way he's been doing. Here's the score to pass along. First quarter, Purdue 7, Indiana nothing. Second down, goal to go. Michigan State the ball at the four and a half yard line of Notre Dame. Jimmy Ray calls the signals. There's the snap. The handoff goes to his right halfback. Jones over left tackle. No gain on the play. Pete Duranko along with Kevin Hardy making the stop for the Irish. Jim Lynch also in there. And get the pat on the seat from Clinton Jones, the ball carrier. The ball is right at the four-yard line now. It'll be third and goal to go from that point. Out of the huddle comes Michigan State once again. They've got a powerful football team. Jimmy Ray, their quarterback, calls the signals. There's the snap. Cavender gets the ball. Touchdown over right tackle. Regis Cavender scores for Michigan State. Good hard-driving run by Cavender on the off-tackle slant. There was no doubt about it. His momentum was going fine. Carried him on in. And now Nick Kenny comes out with his tape measure and his right foot as bare as you please for the try for point by placement. 13 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the half. Michigan State 6, Notre Dame nothing. Dick Kenny has attempted 34 extra points this year and made good on 29 of them. And he's in the ball game now to attempt the extra point for Michigan State. There's the snap. The ball is spotted. It's up in the air. And it's good. The score is Michigan State 7, Notre Dame nothing. And now here's some straight talk from B.F. Goodrich. 73 yards in 10 plays for a touchdown. They lead in this football game 7-0 with 13 minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. The first quarter scores that Purdue-Indiana score we gave you, but we'll repeat. Purdue 7, Indiana nothing. Uh, Tennessee 7, Kentucky nothing. That's first quarter. Colgate 6, Rutgers nothing at the quarter. Princeton and Cornell are scoreless. Throughout the season, we've been receiving... Uh, very fine telegrams from a lot of you folks, but none please me more personally than a couple I got today. Harry Bubeck, president of KBOC in Casper, Wyoming, a dear old friend, and a college classmate I haven't seen in about 30 years. Jack Nealon from Jamestown, New York, thanks to both of them. Dick Kenny will kick off for Michigan State, back deep for Notre Dame. In the center is Rocky Blyer, to his right, Tom Quinn, and on his left is Bob Gladjo. Dick Kenny spots that ball on the right hash mark. Nick Eddy, as we told you earlier, has not seen action in this football game thus far. He has a bad right shoulder. There's the kickoff by Kenny. It's short, being taken at the 14-yard line by Conjar. He's up to the 20, 25, and to the 27-yard line. Kenny doesn't kick a long one, and he doesn't take much of a run-up when he uh, kicks off. He only goes about three or four steps. We're used to seeing a uh, kickoff man run the full 10 yards. But the fascinating thing to me, again, is that Michigan State defense gets down the field so fast that there's not much of a run back. Coley O'Brien is still in at quarterback for Notre Dame with first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. There's the snap. He hands the ball off to Blyer to the 30, to the 35, and to the 37-yard line. The tackle was made by George Webster, and Rocky Blyer travels 14 yards for a first down. Check that, 11 yards. The ball is at the 37 now of Notre Dame as Rocky Blyer took that ball over right tackle. And Notre Dame comes out of the huddle with first and 10 at the 37. Coley O'Brien in its quarterback for Notre Dame. 
He calls the signal, hands off straight ahead to Conjar. And Conjar is over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Jeff Richardson makes the stop for Michigan State. We made the comment earlier that when the Irish are scored upon, they seem to come fighting back twice as uh, angry, twice as vicious. I wonder if that's going to be the case now, Jim. They're battling their way downfield. Conjar picks up four yards. It's second down six with the ball at the 42 or 42 and a half. Eye formation. Blyer the deep man in the eye. Coley O'Brien gets the ball, hands off to Blyer. He puts his head down and he's to the 45-yard line. Richardson in on the stop for Michigan State. Phil Hoig also in on the stop. Brian Stenger now comes in for Notre Dame. Going out of the ball game is Don Gamitter at the tight end position. It'll be third down and about three. The ball at the 45-yard line of Notre Dame. It's Seymour to the right and Blyer to the left. Gladjo in the slot now to the right. It looks like we're going to have an offside penalty against Notre Dame as the ball is thrown and completed to Stenger at the 45-yard line of Michigan State. However, I believe Notre Dame was offside. We'll wait and see. Three flags on the field. No question they're going to get a penalty of some kind. It'll be Notre Dame offside. Don Gamitter back in the ball game at tight end, replacing Brian Stenger. You know, Jim, it appears to me that the Irish are a little bit more on edge this afternoon than the Spartans so far. Notre Dame, uh, usually playing the calm type of ball, seems to be a little skittish out there. Perhaps they have good reason being seven points down, but uh, there's a lot of football game yet to play. It's third down and eight after that offside penalty against Notre Dame. The ball is at the 38-yard line. Check that, the 40-yard line. As O'Brien calls signals, gets the ball, rolls to his left now. He throws down the middle. It's incomplete. Intended for Seymour right over the middle. Defending on the play was Jim Summers. Well, that'll bring in Notre Dame's kicking unit once again with fourth down, eight yards to go from their own 40-yard line. Al Bremer from Niles, Michigan, goes back deep for the Spartans. Big Kevin Hardy in to punt for Notre Dame. First time this year we've seen him punt. There's the snap. He gets the kick away, and it's a good spiral this time, and it's Brenner. At, he lets the ball bounce. He looked like he was going to catch it for a moment, but he lets it bounce down. It rolls inside the 20 to the 19-yard line, and well defended by Notre Dame. Ball Siler down there along with Don Gamitter, a kick of 41 yards. Jim, we've been scanning the Notre Dame bench to see if we can see Hanratty over there or Eddie, either one. But, you know, in this crisp weather, they have those big warm-up uh, jackets over them, and you can't pick up a number, and they're so disguised in those headgears that it's pretty hard to pick them out. We haven't seen or heard anything as to why Hanratty has been out of the game. From Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, this is Frank Sweeney along with Jim Morris bringing you the big game of the century perhaps today. Notre Dame and Michigan State with 10 minutes and 55 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. It is Michigan State leading 7-0 on that touchdown by Cavender and the point after by Kenny. Notre Dame has just punted and uh, we were recalling that I don't uh, know of any game this season where Notre Dame has punted four times this early in the game. And Notre Dame has been contained pretty well by Michigan State this afternoon. The big difference, of course, so far has been that long 42-yard pass to Washington that set up uh, the Spartans, gave them the added push to go in for the touchdown. Notre Dame does not have Eddie on the field. They do not have hand ready. Michigan State is without a pizza, but Cavender is filling in beautifully for him. Michigan State football, first down, 10 yards to go from their own 19-yard line. There's the snap, and off goes to Jones, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Making the stop for Notre Dame, John Horney along with Alan Page and Jim Lynch. No gain on the play by Clinton Jones. Jim, we have a report now that Gedeke suffered a leg injury, Hanratty has injured his shoulder. Michigan State out of the huddle with second and nine from their own 19-yard line. 
Jimmy Ray gets the ball, rolls to his right. He's looking to throw. He's going to run with it now, however. Gets away from one tackler to the 25, 30, 35, 40. And to the 47-yard line goes Jimmy Ray. Jim Smithberger made the stop for Notre Dame. That's where he's the most dangerous when he's running that option. Nobody opened downfield. He just continued to go, and the blockers picked him up. 28 yards on the play by Jimmy Ray, the Michigan State quarterback, and that moved the ball to the 49-yard line of Michigan State. Well, Gedeke is out of the ball game at center for Notre Dame. Terry Hanratty is out with a shoulder injury, and so is Nick Eddy. So the Irish have some problems. Michigan State first and 10 from their own 49. There's the snap. Jimmy Ray hands the ball to Lee. He's to the 45, to the 40, and down to the 35-yard line. Dwight Lee is brought down finally by Tom Rhodes. However, he picks up 13 yards. The ball is spotted at the 37. The Spartans moving that football on the ground against Notre Dame. State has the ball, first and 10 from the Notre Dame 37 yard line. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Cavender. Over right tackle, he's brought down for no gain. Duranko over there along with John Pergeen. Another Big Ten score. First quarter, it's Michigan 3 and Ohio State nothing. Repeating here, it is Michigan State 7 and Notre Dame nothing. You know, someone mentioned to me before the game they prefer that Notre Dame came in here the underdog. It seems like in a game such as this that the underdog has more going for him. Second down, still 10 yards to go from the Notre Dame 37-yard line. Ray gets the ball, moves back to pass now. He throws over the center. It's intercepted by Lynch, and he's to the 35-yard line. He fumbles the football, and I think Michigan State's got it. Yes, they have. Michigan State recovers that football. Jim Lynch intercepted. Returned it, was hit. He fumbled the football, and Lynch has injured his knee. It's not surprising that he fumbled that football, Jim, because he was hit low. He flipped up and landed on his back, turning a complete somersault, and that ball just jarred loose. There was a white shirt there to try for it, but two green shirts intervened, and Michigan State came up with it. So for all intents and purposes, it was just as good as a completed pass for the Spartans. Michigan State's ball, first and 10 at the 36-and-a-half-yard line of Notre Dame. We'll see if they catch Tess Lynch now with that injured knee. The handoff goes to Dwight Lee, and he gets exactly nowhere. Tom Rhodes, Pete Duranko, and Kevin Hardy make the stop for the Irish, and there's about a two-yard loss on the play. Notre Dame, it goes without saying, can ill afford to lose Captain Jimmy Lynch, their great linebacker. He has a few words with Clinton Jones. Two-yard loss on the play, second and 12, the ball at the 38 of Notre Dame. Gene Washington flanks to the right side this time. With second and 12, Jimmy Ray. There's a flag on the play. It's going to be a delay of the game penalty against Michigan State. And quarterback Jimmy Ray likes to discuss that one with referee Howard Wirtz. And don't forget, today's football game is brought to you, as always, on the ABC radio network by B.F. Goodrich, the straight talk tire people, and by State Farm Mutual, the world's largest car insurance company. It's second down, 17 yards to go. Michigan State, the ball at the Notre Dame 33. Washington split to the right. Back to pass and rolling to his right goes the quarterback. He throws, he completes it to Washington at the 27-yard line. Washington on a down-and-out pattern, single coverage over there. Tom Shane was the defender. And it's very close to the first down. It is a first down, Michigan State. Two key plays, passes going from Jimmy Ray to Gene Washington. Their fine split end. Six minutes, 41 seconds remaining here in the first half. And the Spartans are driving once again. They have the ball at the Notre Dame 26-yard line. Out of the huddle they come. Signals being called. There's the snap. Cavender right up the center. He stopped at the 25-yard line. Jim Lynch beat Duranko. John Horney in on the stop. Gain of perhaps a yard on the play. Dave Teklin coming in at right guard again, replacing Mitch Pruitt. The Michigan State sideline 
fairly calling every play. It's second and nine. Michigan State the ball at the 25 of Notre Dame. Split to the left this time is Brenner. Back to pass, rolling to his left, goes Ray, throws it over the center to Washington. It's complete at the 14-yard line. Tackle made for Notre Dame by Tom Shane. And whoever said Jimmy Ray can't pass is not a very observant person. Going into this game, Ray had completed 55 of 103 passes, good for 968 yards and 10 touchdowns. However, there's a flag on the play, and it's going to be a penalty against Michigan State. Tim, looking across the way, I see George Gedeke is uh, running up and down in back of the bench over there. He's running rather limply, though, trying to work that knee back into shape if he can. He wants to get back in this ball game, as well you can imagine. 15 yards against Michigan State for a personal foul. Moves the ball back to the 30-yard line, where it's second and 14. Ray gets the football, rolls to his left, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. Wow. Gene Washington had that football, and what happened was this. Tom Shane, the defender, moved in front of Gene Washington to intercept the football and missed it completely, and then Gene Washington drops the football. Otherwise, he might have been long gone. It'll be third down, 14 yards to go. Michigan State the ball at the 30-yard line of Notre Dame. Out of the huddle now come the Spartans with third and 14. Ray gets the ball, goes back to his left. He's running now, being chased by Duranko. He now throws, and it's incomplete at the 30-yard line. That pass was deflected by Dave Martin, intended for Regis Cavender. And if I said a moment ago it was a 15-yard penalty for a personal foul, correct that. It was a five-yard penalty for delay of the game once again. And it's fourth down and 14, and into the ball game now to attempt I would believe a field goal will come Dick Kenny. And he boots him with a bare toe, if you can believe that. He's converted on four of ten field goals so far this year. Kicks with a bare right foot. He'll be kicking from the 36-yard line. There's the snap. The ball is up in the air. It's got the distance. And it's good. The score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame nothing. What will the odds be great or small? Old Notre Dame will win overall. Fits the situation now with 10 points ahead of them. They've got to fight their way back. Five minutes and 47 seconds remain in the first half. Michigan State has a cushion of 10 points. Nick Eddy, who kicked the field goal, now will kick off barefooted. He lines the ball up on the hash mark in from the east sideline. And he'll take his usual two or three steps up to the ball. Has a towel out there now, drying off the foot. In preparation for this kick, he doesn't kick soccer style. He kicks with those bare toes right into that football, and he gets good distance. He's ready to go, and so is Jim Morris. Dick Kenny puts his foot into the ball again. Good one this time to Blyer. He checks that twin at the 8, back to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and to the 47-yard line goes Tom Quinn. Good run back that time by sophomore Tom Quinn. He was tackled by George Chatlow. You know, today, Jim, they've got a record number of sports writers in attendance, and I recall that John O'Donnell of the Davenport Democrat Times is here, and he recalled that Quinn is an Iowa boy. Tony O'Brien still in at quarterback. A return that time of 38 yards by Quinn. Seymour is to the left, first and 10 at the 46. Back to pass. Goes O'Brien. He fires down the center. It's incomplete to Seymour. At the Michigan State 40-yard line. Pass was thrown just a little bit behind Seymour. He had a turn and could not hold on to it. First quarter scores Brown 24, Columbia 6, Temple 9, Bowling Green 7, Holy Cross 7, Connecticut nothing. Second down, still 10 yards to go. Notre Dame from their own 46. Seymour goes to the right side along with Gladjo. Blyer and Conjar are the setbacks. Back to pass goes O'Brien. He's being chased. He throws now, and it's complete at the 44-yard line of Michigan State to Bob Gladjo. It was tackled immediately by Jim Summers, and it'll be very close to the first down. It is a first down. At the 43-yard line, the ball is spotted now. First down, Notre Dame. 
Out of the huddle come the Irish. Seymour split left this time. He has not caught a pass so far in this football game. First and ten at the 43-yard line of Michigan State. Coley O'Brien directing the Irish. Gets the ball. Goes back to pass. Rolls to his left. He fires. And it's complete to Breyer at the 35-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds by Jess Phillips. Rocky Breyer catching that for Notre Dame. Ball is spotted at the 34, a gain of about nine yards on the play. It'll be a second down and a yard to go. An interesting sidelight, Jim, in the course of events here. We've got two scramblers now, two little guys, O'Brien for Notre Dame and Ray for Michigan State at quarterback. One running back, and that's Conjar with second and one. Back to pass goes O'Brien. He looks. He throws long. It's too flat, Joe, and it's a touchdown. Notre Dame. on the play from Coley O'Brien to Bob Gladjo. And Tom Regner has a bear hug on Gladjo. And Gladjo didn't let up. He kept right on going and O'Brien hit him. I think the two Michigan State defenders didn't think he could catch up with that pass, but he got the burst of speed and went in. Now for the try for point after Joe Azaro on his 21st birthday. Coley O'Brien will hold. Azaro will kick. There's the snap. The ball is spotted. It's up in the air, and it's good. The score is Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7. Gladjo caught a 34-yard scoring pass. He beat Jimmy Summers on the play, the left defensive halfback for Michigan State. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Jim, I mentioned that we get telegrams throughout the season. And I think I'm remiss if I don't mention uh, so many folks in hospitals and uh, rest homes throughout the country also listen to our broadcast, and we hope enjoy them. One of those in particular I'd like to pass along my best wishes to is my own dear mother in Peoria. Four minutes and 30 seconds remaining. We're snugged up at 10 to 7. Michigan State still in the lead. Azaro kicks off for Notre Dame. It's right down the middle. Taken at the 14-yard line. Back to the 15, 20, 25. And to the 32-yard line goes Frank Waters. So with four minutes, 24 seconds. Remaining in the first half of this football game, Michigan State has the lead. By virtue of the field goal of Dick Kenny a few moments ago, they have the lead 10-7. Notre Dame went 54 yards in four plays for their touchdown. It's Michigan State's ball, first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Out of the huddle come the Spartans. Unbalanced line to the left this time. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, rolls to his left. He's being chased by Page. And Page can't get him. He's going to run him to the 30, the 35, the 40, and to the 45-yard line goes Jimmy Ray. Knocked out of bounds right below us by Dave Martin and John Horney. Boy, that Jimmy Ray is dangerous. That bird Whatever it looks like there's a flag on the play, Frank. Excuse me just a moment. We'll see. no official indication yet to what happened. He may have stepped out of bounds back there. That is the official call. Jimmy Ray stepped out of bounds back at the 32 yard line. So it's second down and 11. A loss of a yard on that play instead of a big gain. Jimmy Ray goes back, rolls to his right. He throws over here and it's complete and then knocked down. The receiver, Gene Washington, had that football in his hands for just a second. However, Tom O'Leary came up and really wrapped him, and it was ruled that he did not maintain possession. One of the things that makes Ray especially dangerous is he is so little, he is terrifically fast. Page and Hardy and Duranko put the rush on him. They're big guys, but they just can't catch up with the little guy as he scoots around him. Jimmy Ray has completed three of seven, good for 70 yards. Michigan State has the ball with third and 11 from their own. 31-yard line. Washington is split to the right. There's the snap. Here's the draw play to the fullback, and he's dropped right at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Hardy and Pete. No, check that. Kevin Hardy and John Horney. Regis Cavender is stopped for a yard loss. In the rushing department for Michigan State, Jones has carried four times for nine. Lee, three times for 13. Ray, nine times for 34. Cavender, five times for 22. Gene Washington has caught two passes, good for 59 yards. Dick Kenny now in the football game 
to punt for Michigan State on fourth and 13. He stands at his own 15-yard line. There's the snap. There's the kick. It's an end over end this time, coming to Shane at the 40. He returns it to the 45, and believe me, that's all. Great defensive play that time for Michigan State by Alan Brenner, the fine end from Niles, Michigan. However, Notre Dame has the football with 3.06 remaining in the half, and they have it at their own 45-yard line. Tim Monty is the center for Notre Dame, replacing the injured Gedeke. First and 10 from the Notre Dame, 45. Seymour is to the left. O'Brien is the quarterback. There's the snap. He rolls to his left. He looks. He throws. And it's over the head of the intended receiver. Way out on the far side of the field is number 28, Rocky Blyer. Looked like Gladjo for a moment. However, it was not. Defending on the play was Jess Phillips for Michigan State. Irish out of the huddle once again with second down 10. The ball at their own 45-yard line. Jim Seymour split far to the left. Gladjo flanked a little bit to the right. Eye formation in the backfield. And back to pass. And the handoff now goes to Blocky Blyer. He's over the 45, over the 50, and into Michigan State territory at the 48-yard line. Good fake that time. O'Brien rolled to his right. Looked like he was going to throw. And handed off late to Rocky Blyer. Who moved the ball to the 48-yard line of Michigan State, where he was stopped by George Webster. Gain of seven on the play. It's third and three. And Notre Dame takes the timeout. Well, every week, as it's been all year long, on the ABC radio network, Jimmy Morris along with Frank Sweeney, reminding you that these football games are sponsored every week by the B.F. Goodrich Company, the Straight Talk Tire People, and by State Farm Mutual, the world's largest car insurance company. In Michigan State and Notre Dame meeting today, this is the 32nd time in a series that started with the Irish winning a 34-6 game in way back there in 1897. At the present time, it's 10-7. Michigan State over the Irish. Jim, you have some stats there. I just want to remind the people that Notre Dame has three offensive regulars out of this football game. Setter George Gedeke, halfback Nick Eddy, and quarterback Terry Hanratty. For Notre Dame, O'Brien has completed four of eight, good for 52 yards. Conjar has carried the ball five times for 16 yards. Blyer has carried the ball five times, good for 22 yards. In the passing department, Gladjo has caught four for 69. Blyer, one for nine. What a football game we have. Notre Dame out of the huddle with third and three from the Michigan State 48-yard line. Seymour and Blyer to the left. O'Brien keeps the football over left tackle, and he does not get the first down. Hit very hard over there on the far side of the field by Bubba Smith. Also in on the stop, George Chatlos, fine defensive end. So we'll have a fourth down. The ball at the 47 of Michigan State. Fourth and two. One minute, 57 seconds remaining here in the first half. And into the ball game comes big Kevin Hardy to kick. He'll be standing at his own 40-yard line. Michigan State has the lead in this game, 10-7 if you joined us late. Hardy standing now at his 39. And there's a delay of game penalty being called against Notre Dame. So five yards will be marched off against the Irish. Bringing you up to date on scores of other games played, some of these are repeats. First quarter score, Purdue 7, Indiana nothing. Tennessee 7, Kentucky nothing. Colgate 6, Rutgers nothing. At the half, Princeton and Cornell are scoreless. At the half, Harvard leaves Yale 10 nothing. Hardy will be standing at his own 34 this time. Alan Brenner is back deep for the Spartans. There's the snap, good one this time. Gets the kick away, high spiral. Bouncing at the 15, takes a Notre Dame bounce, and it's stopped at the two-yard line by Notre Dame. Down there very quickly for the Irish was Jim Seymour, and he batted that ball dead at about the one-foot line. We're talking about having your backs to the wall. That's where the Spartans are right now, with a minute and 15 seconds remaining here in the first half. I got a back scratcher working for him, though. A three-point lead, Jim. 51 yards on the kick by Kevin Hardy.
Jimmy Lynch apparently has fully recovered from that knee injury he had a, in the last series. Out of that will come the Spartans. First and ten from their own one-yard line. Quarterback sneak by Jimmy Ray. Gets out to about the three or four-yard line. Duranko, along with Jim Lynch, making a stop for the Irish. Notre Dame, I believe, is going to call a timeout here. To stop that clock with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. That's exactly it. Notre Dame thus far, I believe, has called two. Check that. I'm informed they've called three. They have one remaining in this half. Not only do we have the number one team in the nation and the number two team in the nation fighting here this afternoon, we have a record crowd again on hand and a record number of uh, sports writers and radio people covering the game. Interesting to note that there's a big high smokestack over here at the southeast corner of the stadium and way up high, they have a dummy hung in effigy and MSU is number one. 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Michigan State has the lead, 10-7. They also have the football with second and eight, the ball at their own three-yard line. Notre Dame called timeout after the last play. They'd like to get their hands on the football once more in this half. Michigan State out of the huddle now and up to the line of scrimmage. Ray, the quarterback, calls the signals. There's the snap. He gets the ball, rolls to his right. He's to have perhaps the five-yard line, but that's all. John Horney, John Pergine, and Dave Martin all over there for the Irish along with Tom O'Leary. And Notre Dame takes the timeout again, stopping that clock with 42 seconds remaining in the first half. Gain of a yard on that play, so it'll be third down, seven yards to go. Michigan State, the ball at their own five-yard line. Notre Dame's used up its timeouts now, Jim, so they'll have to go uh, against the clock. 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. Michigan State, 10 and Notre Dame 7. And Dave Tecklin comes in at right guard for Michigan State, replacing Mitch Pruitt with a play from Coach Duffy Doherty, the fine head coach of the Spartans. Here comes Michigan State up to the line of scrimmage. Flank to the left, uh, left side this time is Dwight Lee. There's the snap. Quarterback sneak by Rain. He's out to the 7 or 8 yard line, shy of the first down. So Michigan State will be forced into a punting situation. However, with the seconds ticking off the clock and Notre Dame with no more timeouts, it's doubtful whether Notre Dame will have much of a chance to put that ball in play. 22 seconds, 21. Michigan State taking plenty of time. They may be able to run this clock out before the punt. And if not, they'll be very close. They may get a delay of the game penalty, Jim. I don't know. It's going to be a snug fit either way. Officials looking at the clock. Two, one. And there's the end of the first half with the scoreboard reading Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7. Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7. As we're just about to get underway, there's the whistle from referee Howard Wirtz. Going back deep for Michigan State is number 43, Frank Water Waters. Also back deep, but not quite as deep, is Bob Super and Dick Berlinski. Joe Azaro will be kicking off for Notre Dame. The Irish will be defending our goal to the left, which is the north goal. Michigan State will receive and defend the goal to our right of the south goal. Notre Dame lines up. Michigan State is already set. Joe Azaro on his 21st birthday, kicking off for the Irish. There's the whistle. There's the kick. Good long boot this time. Waters at the 10, back to the 15, back to the 20, 25, 30, 32 yard line. There's a fumble on the play. Let's see who has it. Michigan State retains possession at the 30 yard line. The Notre Dame ball players were motioning that the Irish had the football. However, Michigan State retains possession for Gene and Quinn made the stop for the Irish. Spartans football, first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. Out of the huddle they come. In that backfield, again, we have Lee, Cavender, Jones, and Ray. There's the snap. The handoff is a fumble on the play. And Notre Dame has the football. John Horney, John Horney recovered.
recovers the football for Notre Dame. So the Irish have it first and ten at the Michigan State 31-yard line. Psychologically, this gives them a big boost right now, Jim. They're trailing by three points. They own the football at the 31. And out of the huddle they come with a first and ten situation. The lone man in that backfield is Larry Conger. To the left is Seymour. Back to pass goes the quarterback, Coley O'Brien. He throws down the sideline. It's intercepted by Michigan State at the two-yard line. Strong intercepted that pass for Michigan State. It was intended for Rocky Blyer. So back at the two-yard line, the Spartans have the football first and ten. Now the fortunes can change in a matter of seconds. Brother, what a football game we're witnessing here this afternoon. Michigan fans will be interested in this halftime score. Michigan leads Ohio State ten to three. Second half action just underway. Spartans out of the huddle with first and ten from their own two-yard line. Jimmy Ray gets the football, keeps it himself. He's brought down at about the five-yard line, and Lynch really racked him. He looked like he was going to fall forward to the seven or eight. Someone had a hold of him, and Lynch came along and really smacked him. Kevin Hardy had a hold of him. Gain of about three on the play. That will be second and seven. Into the ball game now comes Mitch Pruitt at guard, replacing Dave Teklin. Spartans, of course, wanting to take no chances down here deep in their own territory. Out of the huddle they come, second and seven from their own five. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, option to the right side, and he stopped at the six-yard line. Virgine over there, Rhodes over there, and Pete Duranko. You know, about a half a yard on the play, and back in the ball game comes Teklin again for Michigan State, replacing Mitch Pruitt. You know, I was a little surprised that Coley would go for the uh, long bomb on that first play that Notre Dame had possession of the ball, and Howie Murdoch brought up a thing at halftime. Coley throws a lot lower than Hanratty yet. That figures in this game, too. It's exactly right, Frank. It's third and about six and a half. The ball at the five and a half yard line of Michigan State. Ray gets the football, goes to the left side, gets away from one tackler. He's got a first down over the 10-yard line. Jimmy Ray behind fine blocking. On the option, play to the left. A great run that time because there was another Dame lineman around his legs as Ray moved behind his interference downfield, did not stir him up one little bit, and he went for the first down. The ball is at the 13-yard line of Michigan State. First and 10, Spartans. Out of the huddle they come. Clinton Jones on the flank to the right side. Washington split about two yards. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. He rolls to his right. Being chased. Throws out here. It's complete. At the 25-yard line to Gene Washington. Gain of 12 yards on the play. Another first down for the Spartans. That Ray is just too quick. The Notre Dame linemen are in there on him, but they can't get to him fast enough to pull him down before he gets that football away. spotted right at the 25-yard line where it's first and 10, Michigan State. Out of the huddle they come. Balance line. There's the snap. Quarterback sneak by Jimmy Ray, and he fights his way out to perhaps the 23, or I should check that, the 28 or 29-yard line. Kevin Hardy and Pete Duranko in the center of that line. And we have these running guards in and out of the ball game for Michigan State as Pruitt comes in. And Tucklin goes out. Gain of two and a half yards on the play. We're going to call it second and seven. The ball is the 27 and a half. There's the snap. And off goes to Dwight Lee, and he's dropped in his tracks on a cross buck. Boy, Kevin Hardy and Pete Duranko saw to it that he went exactly nowhere. They close that trap hole right down, right now. Third and seven, no gain on the play. Big play now, both for that Michigan State offense and that Notre Dame defense. Third and seven ball at the 28-yard line now. Gain of about a half a yard on that last play. Washington is flanked far to the right side this time. Ray gets the ball, hands to Clinton Jones. He's coming wide around the left side. He gets away from one man, and he's to the 27 or 28-yard line. He's bounced out of bounds. There's a flag on the play. John Pergine and John Horney 
Knocked him out of bounds. Boy, you can see that that kid has got some moves, though. He dipped in and dipped out and went right around one of the Notre Dame defenders. Holding. Called against Michigan State. Tim, the word has been passed along that Terry Hanratty suffered a left shoulder separation in that first quarter, so I would dare say he's going to be out of business. Not only for this game, Frank, but also for the game next Saturday against Southern California. The penalty is declined by Notre Dame, so that'll bring a fourth and seven situation and bring in Dick Kenny to punt for the Spartans. Going back deep for Notre Dame will be number seven, Tom Shane. Kenny standing at his own 15-yard line. He punts with his shoe on, kicks extra points and field goals, and kickoffs with his shoe off. There's the snap. It's high. And it, he gets the pat, kick away, however, and fair catch is called for by Tom Sheen at his own 42-yard line. That center, or pass from center, almost sailed over the head of Dick Kenny. He jumped up and caught it with one hand. And the clock has stopped with the score. Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 7. Nine minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Michigan State has the lead by the score of 10 to 7. Notre Dame has the football, first and 10, from their own 43-yard line. Seymour goes to the left. Gladjo is flanked to the right. Blyer and Conjar the setbacks. Scully O'Brien hands it to number 28, Blyer. He's to the 45 and to the 47-yard line. Goes Rocky Blyer before he's dumped by Sterling Armstrong. Gain of five or six yards on the play. Spotted at the 47 and a half, so we'll call it a five-yard gain, and it's second and five. Seymour to the left, Gladjo to the right. Split backfield this time for Notre Dame. Blyer and Conjar. O'Brien gets the ball, hands to Conjar over left tackle, and he's over the 50 and into Michigan State territory, and perhaps about a yard or two short of the first down. Jeff Richardson making the stop for Michigan State. And we're going to have a measurement. Notre Dame attempts to move the ball on the ground now. One play to Blyer and one play to Conjar. He's going to be about a yard short. Half a yard, perhaps. It'll be third down. And about a half a yard, we'll call it, for the first down. Dave Haley, standing on the far sidelines, looking like he might be ready to come into the football game. Out of the huddle come the Irish with third and about a half a yard. The ball at the Michigan State 48-yard line. O'Brien calls the signals. He gets the ball. Over left tackle. He keeps it himself. He's got the first down. To about the 46-yard line. And some of the fans in the stands might be wondering uh, how often Coley is going to be carrying that football because... Terry Hanratty is out of the game and will not be able to come back. He has a separated left shoulder. Pat Gallinaw and Chuck Thornhill made the stop for Michigan State. The ball is right at the 47 of the Spartans, where it's first and 10 Notre Dame. Seymour to the left, Gladjo to the right. There's the snap. Straight ahead to Blyer. He's inside the 45-yard line to the 44. George Webster makes the stop for Michigan State. We've been told so much that Notre Dame has a fine defense and Michigan State a fine defense. The thing that impresses me is the way this Michigan State defense reacts and recovers when they see that it's not going to be the pass. Those linebackers are in there trying to stop the run. Dave Haley has replaced Bob Gladjo at right halfback, and he's flanked to the right side this time. It's second and eight, the ball at the 45 of Michigan State. There's the snap. Back to pass goes O'Brien. He's being rushed, and he's dropped back at the 44-yard line of Notre Dame. Four big men in there. George Shatlos, the first man. Bill Hoig and Pat Gallinaw all in there to stop Coley O'Brien. Ball is way back at the Notre Dame 44-yard line. we third and about 19 yards to go. Twelve-yard loss on the play. Seymour and Healy to the right this time. 
Ball at the Notre Dame 44. Draw play to Rocky Blyer. He's over the 45 to about the 48-yard line, but he stopped right there. Chuck Thornhill and George Webster made the stop for Michigan State. That'll be fourth down and about uh, 16 yards to go for the first down. And that'll bring in big Kevin Hardy to do the punting for Notre Dame. Alan Brenner is back deep for the Spartans. There's the snap. Kick is away. Kind of a wobbler this time. However, it takes a long bounce, goes back to Brenner, and he's dropped back at the five-yard line of Michigan State. In on the stop for Notre Dame, Haley is down there. And Tom Regner is down there. So Michigan State will have the football, first and ten from their own five-yard line. That ball bounced at the 15 and took a real quick hop to Brenner. A 42-yard kick by Kevin Hardy. Clock is stopped with the score. Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7. Kevin Hardy for Notre Dame this afternoon has punts of 40, 38, 41, 51, and 42. Michigan State's football, first and 10 from their own five-yard line. Washington is split far to the right. There's the snap. Ray goes back to pass. The long one to Washington. He's in the clear, and he's got it at the 45-yard line, and he's dropped right there. Make the stop. That's the same sort of a pass play that uh, Ray completed to Washington for 42 yards in the first or in the second quarter that set them up for their first score. A long floater, and Washington keeps going downfield. He gets a couple of steps on O'Leary and Shane, and he's got it. 40 yards on the play. Washington has now caught three for 71. First and 10, Michigan State from their own 45. Ray goes back to pass, rolls to his left. Being chased, he's brought down by Kevin Hardy at the 44-yard line. Well, we expected to see Hanratty, the one throwing the long bombs today, Jim, but Michigan State's uh, Jimmy Ray has taken over the play. It's still Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7, five minutes remaining in the third quarter, and Michigan State in possession of that football. Loss of about two yards. It's second and 12. Ball at the Michigan State 44. Washington wide to the right again. Single coverage over there. It's the draw play to Clinton Jones. Gets away from one tackler. He's over the 50 to the Notre Dame 47 or 48 yard line. Tackle made there by Duranco, Shane, Horney, and Smithberger. Gain of about 10 yards on the play. We'll call it third. Gain, give him nine yards. Call it third and three. The ball at the 47 of Notre Dame. Tom O'Leary's got his hands full over there with big Gene Washington. Trying to cover him all by himself. Third and three at the Notre Dame 47. Jimmy Ray hands the ball to his full back and raised me as he stopped before he got to the line of scrimmage. Kevin Hardy, John Pergeen, and Jim Lynch making a stop for Notre Dame, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation. And in comes Dick Kenny, Dick Kenny, that is, for Michigan State. Kenny will be kicking from his own 40-yard line. On fourth and four, the ball is at the Notre Dame 48. There's the snap. Kenny gets the ball. He kicks it. Good one this time. Shane calls for the fair catch, lets it go, and it goes into the end zone. Very good punt coverage that time by Michigan State. Fine call by Tom Shane. He called for the fair catch, let it go over his head, and it bounced into the end zone. 48 yards on that kick by Dick Kenny. So, Notre Dame will have the ball once again. They trail in the game 10-7 with 3-23 remaining in the third period. Coley O'Brien going all the way for Notre Dame. That quarterback since the first quarter injury to Terry Hanratty. 
One of our fine ABC stations in Galesburg, Illinois, WAIK, through their chief engineer, Ray Bevenauer, send us uh, the good word, Jim. They're glad to hear us today. They'd like to see Notre Dame get on more of the scoring column. We also have a couple of nice notes, Frank, from Lou Brubaker, Jack, Jim Flynn, and Jack Crashauer. We had the pleasure of being with a week ago in South Bend at the Duke game. Regardless of the outcome here this afternoon, Jim Morris and I, Frank Sweeney, will be in Los Angeles next Saturday afternoon to bring you the Notre Dame Southern Cal football game. And that, too, should be another fine football game in the series of Notre Dame in the 1966 season. Down on the field now, timeout. Michigan State in their green and white uh, array, green jerseys, white numerals, and white pants. Notre Dame in their gold trousers and white jerseys with blue numerals. Again, uh, we'd, in case you joined us late and... Uh, haven't heard it. I don't know where you've been, but Terry Hanratty was injured in the early part of the game today. Nick Eddy injured again as uh, yesterday. He tumbled coming off the train. So Notre Dame has uh, battled back even in spite of the injuries in a close ball game, 10 to 7. Back to the action in New Gym. It's first down, 10 yards to go. Notre Dame from their own 20 yard line. Seymour is split to the left. Conjar, the lone remaining running back, as O'Brien goes back to pass. He throws. It's complete at the 30 yard line to Rocky Blyer. And he's dropped immediately by Jim Summers, the left defensive halfback for Michigan State. Be 10 yards on the play and very close to the first down. It's possible to be inches short. Now it's moved ahead now. It is a, now check that once again. It's a second down and inches. O'Brien calls the signals. He goes back to pass, looking for the bomb, throws down the middle. And it's complete to Conjar at the 45-yard line. Larry Conjar moves that ball to the 45 and falls forward to the 47-yard line. Good Jeff call. Phillips made the stop for Michigan State. Good call by O'Brien. I think Michigan State was looking for a plunge, and he fooled him, and Conjar pulled it in. Conjar, you know, says he's the third running guard in the, Michi in the uh, Notre Dame backfield. He says, when I get that ball, I'm running for my life. 18 yards on the play. Dave Haley now in at halfback, replacing Blyer. First and 10 from the 47 of Notre Dame. O'Brien back to pass again. He looks, he fires down the center. It's over the head of the intended receiver and incomplete. Pass was intended for Bob Gladjo at the 37-yard line, and Gladjo is limping. Rocky Blyer comes back in the ball game. Now he replaces Bob Gladjo. First and or second and ten, Notre Dame. The ball at their own 46-yard line. Out of the huddle come the Irish. Two minutes, set six seconds remaining in the third quarter. Jim Seymour split to the left. In the slot to that side, Haley. Back to pass. Goes O'Brien. He looks. He throws. And it's complete at the 35-yard line on the far side of the field. And driven out of bounds at about the 30, and that pass was completed to Dave Haley. Driven out of bounds over there by Sterling Armstrong. 25 yards on that play. Jim, I don't want to be redundant, but I, I'm still impressed with the fact that these guys are used to hand ready, throwing high, and Coley is a different type passer, but now maybe they're beginning to click. Notre Dame is driving, first and 10. At the 30-yard line of Michigan State, in motion. To the left goes Blyer, and back to pass goes O'Brien. He throws it over the center. It's incomplete. That was a tackle-eligible play to Paul Seiler. He could not handle the football. No, so it's Notre Dame's ball at the 30-yard line. Second down, 10. 155 remaining in the third quarter as Notre Dame comes out of the huddle. Seymour and Haley go to the right side. O'Brien calls the signals, hands off to Conjar, right up the middle, he fumbles the football. There's a flag on the play, Michigan State has the ball, let's see. There's a flag on the play, let's see what the call is. Offside is being called against Michigan State. So after that fumble by Conjar and recovery by Michigan State, Notre Dame, I believe, will retain possession of that football. It's exactly right. An offside penalty against the Spartans. 
That could be the biggest play in this ball game, Jim, with Michigan State leading by just three points. The Irish own that football at the 25 of Michigan State. It'll be second and five. This may be the momentum they need. Well, we'll certainly know, Frank Sweeney, in just a few moments. That fumble was caused on a fine, hard tackle by George Webster. It's second down and five. Notre Dame at the 25-yard line of Michigan State. Seymour to the wide side of the field, the right side. O'Brien hands the ball to Haley over left tackle, and he fights his way out of bounds at somewhere around the 20 or 21-yard line. Sterling Armstrong over there, driving him out of bounds, along with Chuck Thornhill. He is probably about a yard shy of that first down. Third and one Notre Dame at the 21-yard line of Michigan State. Out of the huddle come the Irish with what amounts to a second-string backfield. Goley O'Brien calls the signals, hands off to Conjar over left tackle, first down, he's to the 15-yard line. Boy, that Larry Conjar has been some runner here this afternoon for Notre Dame. Every time he gets the football, he makes yardage. Great blocks on the left side of the Notre Dame line by Paul Seiler and Tom Regner. The stop was made by Thornhill and Webster. That may be a second-string backfield, but that's a first-class, first-team fullback. You're certainly right, Frank, and it's first down, 10 yards to go. Notre Dame at the 17-yard line of Michigan State. O'Brien. Gets the ball, hands off to Blyer around the right side. He fights his way inside the 15 to around the 12-yard line. Rocky Blyer, who all year long has done a superb job in that offensive backfield for Notre Dame. A gain of five yards on the play as the ball is spotted at the 12-yard line. Second down, five, Notre Dame. At the Michigan State 12, out of the huddle they come. I formation, Blyer the deep man in the eye. O'Brien the quarterback. There's the snap, the handoff to Conjar up the middle, and he fights his way to the 10-yard line. Really stacked up in the center of that line of Michigan State. Webster in there along with Gallinaw and Jeff Richardson. Nick Jordan coming back into that ball game at tackle. It'll be third down at about four. You know, Jim, Notre Dame quarterbacks always have the pressure on him, but you got to tip your hat to Coley. He's playing beautifully, and the pressure is really on him now. That he is, Frank. Split to the left this time is Seymour. O'Brien barks the signals. He rolls to his left now. He looks to throw. Now he runs back to the right. He's back to the 10-yard line, and that's all. A fine defensive play by Michigan State's Jeff Richardson. And that's the end of the third quarter with a score Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7. Let's pause now for station identification. Notre Dame has the football. Fourth down, five yards to go at the Michigan State 10 yard line. And Joe Azaro is in the football game. He'll be attempting a field goal from somewhere around the 17 or 18 yard line. And as Frank Sweeney pointed out to you earlier in this football game, today is Joe Azaro's 21st birthday. This would be some birthday present if he can boot that field goal for the Irish. You know, there's hardly a play goes by in a football game that doesn't give the Monday morning quarterback something to talk about. And here's one that they'll have to talk about. I'm sure a lot of folks along the line are wondering, maybe Notre Dame ought to go for the uh, six-point touchdown. But they're only behind three points. This ball game is one where you can't figure that you're going to get another score. Fifteen minutes of playing time remaining, and uh, Arab Parsegian, in our hearts, the number one coach in the nation, has elected that the field goal is the thing to go for. At least that's uh, what he's setting up here. Azaro's on the field, ready for the field goal try. And limping back into the ball game for Notre Dame is George Gedeke to center that ball. This is a big play. Back to the action in Jim Morton. That ball is going to be spotted for this field goal attempt at the 18-yard line. O'Brien will hold. Ball is snapped. It's spotted. It's up in the air. And it's good. And we have a brand new football game here at Spartan Stadium. Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 10 with 14 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in this football game. 
You know, before the game, Howie Murdoch facetiously said, what do you suppose would happen if the team captain that won the toss said, uh, let's all go home? <laughs> well, here it is. We're right back where we started, in effect. It's all even, just like it was at the opening kickoff. Notre Dame 10, Michigan State 10. The Irish will kick off, and we've got 14 minutes and 57 seconds in which to decide this ball game. Well, we can smile again, Jim, who was looking a little dim there for a while. Well, whoever wins this football game, it's been tremendous. The Zyro kicks off for Notre Dame. It's going deep. And to Frank Waters at the 10. He's back to the 15 and to the 20 and to the 23-yard line where he is stopped by Jimmy Lynch, Notre Dame's fine captain. John Horney also in there. Clinton, Iowa fans are going to hear a lot about my young Mr. Quinn of Notre Dame in the years to come because he's the first man down the field on all those punts, all those kickoffs. They almost made the tackle on that one. Lynch is really trying to pep up that defense now for Notre Dame. It's first and 10 Michigan State from their own 23. And Washington on that single coverage is flanked wide to the right side again. Jimmy Ray calls the quarterback. He's going back. He's looking for Washington. It's to Washington, the long one. And it's over his head, incomplete at the 30-yard line. Brother, has he got some speed. Yes, he has. He roared right by the Notre Dame defender that time. And the defender had about a seven-yard start on him. There's no question that they'd like to put that long bomb to Gene Washington. Washington is the CCC Conference 100-yard dash and hurdle champion, Jim. No wonder the fellow's got some speed. Boy, he can fly. He can fly. Well, Larry went on the angle trying to even get ahead of him and couldn't do it. It's second down 10. Michigan State from their own 23-yard line. Tight formation this time. Clinton Jones in the slot to the right. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. He goes back to pass. He throws it, and it's complete at the 34-yard line to Gene Washington, and he's driven out of bounds by Tom O'Leary. And that'll be close to a first down. Jimmy Lynch calls for a measurement. He wants to take no chances. That option play that Ray has been running all day has been the most dangerous thing in Duffy Doherty's arsenal of tricks because, uh, you know, Ray can run. If he gets bottled up back there, he may run, and he's been getting that long pass away at the last particular moment. You've got The defense has got to commit itself, and he's been working it to almost perfection. First down for Michigan State. That ball is going to be spotted just about at the 34-yard line. Oh, another first down for the Spartans. In at right guard comes Dave Tucklin again, replacing Mitch Pruitt with a play from Coach Duffy Doherty. It's first and ten Spartans from their own 34. Out of the huddle comes Michigan State and up to the line of scrimmage in their green and white uniforms. Everyone's tight this time. High formation. Quarterback Ray keeps it, and he's to the 40, 45, over the 50-yard line, and down to the Notre Dame 46. Quarterback sneak. Executed perfectly, too, because there was a rib dog on that one. He went right by the quarterback who went underneath. Where's Vicky that time? A beautiful block for Michigan State. He's the left guard. Left tackle. Correction. So, it's Michigan State on the move now with first and 10 at the Notre Dame 46-yard line. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, hands to Clinton Jones, and he's dropped right at the line of scrimmage. In on the tackle for Notre Dame, big Kevin Hardy, number 74. Dave Martin also up there to make sure Jones goes nowhere. Declan back in, Pruitt back out. You know, about a half a yard on the play. The ball is just outside the Notre Dame 45-yard line. Jimmy Ray with second and nine. Gets the ball. It's a quarterback sneak, and Lynch has got it. Drops him for a loss. Boy, Jim Lynch was looking for him that time. May have fooled Lynch on the preceding quarterback sneak, but he was not going to get away that time at all. Lynch was on top of him almost as fast as he had the football. Loss of a yard and a half on the play, so let's call it third and about 11. The ball at the 47-yard line of Notre Dame. 
Of him. Big play, Frank. You get the feeling that in this close ball game, there's going to be something explode here in just a matter of moments, one way or the other. Well, I'll tell you, Gene Washington is flanked wide to the right, and he's explosive, no question about that. Third and 11. I think Ray will be looking for him. Ray goes back to pass. He looks, and he throws, and it's complete, I believe. Incomplete, caught out of bounds. Caught out of bounds. A marker on the play. There's a marker at the 45-yard line. Here's the penalty. Will be against Michigan State because it's being discussed with Notre Dame's captain, Jim Lynch. The penalty is declined. <laughs> Illegal motion penalty declined. So that'll bring up a fourth down and 11, and Dick Kenny will be in the punt for Michigan State. And he can boom them. Tom Shane going back now for the Irish. Kenny stands at his own 39-yard line. There's the snap. There's the boot, and it's a beauty. Long, high spiral. Fair catch call for by Shane at his own 8-yard line. An excellent 40-yard kick by Dick Kenny of Michigan State puts Notre Dame way deep in their own territory with a first and 10 at their own 8-yard line. Then again, the quarterback's Monday morning type can have a ball because what would you do? Would you play, try to play possession football now or would you try to get reckless and go for the score? We'll know in just a moment as Notre Dame is out of the huddle with a first and ten. Coley O'Brien barks the signals, hands off the Conjar right up the middle and he's to the nine-yard line. Jeff Richardson, Pat Gallinaw making the stop for Michigan State. Number 39, Drake Garrett is coming in for Michigan State now. Nick Jordan comes out. He's a tackle, so they'll have a prevent defense in there. With second and nine, the ball at the nine-yard line. Coley O'Brien is the quarterback. He gets the ball. He hands it to his left halfback, who is Rocky Blyer, over right tackle, and he gets out to about the 12. Chatlos and Thornhill make the stop for Michigan State. It becomes all the more obvious that these two, two teams should be rated one and two. They're playing even Stephen football tied up on the uh, scoreboard. And back to the action with you, Jim. Gain of three. It's third down. Six yards to go. The ball at the Notre Dame 12. Seymour wide to the left. Coley O'Brien gets the ball. Hands to Blyer. And he's to the 15-yard line, shy of the first down. Blyer, Gary. Jimmy Summers. And Jimmy Summers made the stop for Michigan State. And that'll bring in Kevin Hardy to punt for Notre Dame. I suppose I'm as curious as everyone else as to why Hardy is doing the punting today. But nonetheless, he has done it and done it quite adequately. Hardy will be standing at his own five-yard line. Alan Brenner is back deep for Michigan State. There's the snap. There's the kick. And it's a beauty this time. Kind of a floater taken by Brenner at his own 46-yard line. He gets not into the screen, and he's brought down back at his own 44. Regner is down there. And Monty is down there along with Dick Swatland. So in this quarter thus far, Michigan State has had the field position. Baba Pisa is in at fullback now for Michigan State, replacing Regis Cavender. A Pisa going into this football game had carried 84 times for 444 yards. A 39-yard kick that time by Kevin Hardy. The ball is right at the 45-yard line of Michigan State. Just a little better than 10 minutes remaining in this ball game. Notre Dame and Michigan State all tied up at 10 and 10. This football game was talked about all season long. It finally has come down to the wire. With these two ball clubs undefeated, Michigan State with nine victories and no defeats, Notre Dame with eight victories and no defeats. It was talked about for weeks before it came up. It's a cinch to be talked about for weeks and perhaps even years after its conclusion today. These two ball clubs rated number one and two make the writers look like they really know what they're talking about when they pick up those poles and place them. Michigan State, of course, would like to uh, assert that they are number one. However, the Irish hold that ranking and uh, will continue to hold it unless things go the opposite way in uh, 10 minutes and 18 seconds of playing time still to run on the clock. Michigan State first and 10. Here's Jim Morris. 
State has the ball on their own 45-yard line, and they're up to the line of scrimmage. Apiza's at fullback now. He gets the football right up the middle and gains a yard or two. Duranko's in there. Barney's in there along with Jim Lynch, the Notre Dame captain and linebacker. Two yards on the play. The ball at the 47. And into the ball game again comes Mitch Pruitt replacing Dave Teklin. Regis Cavender back in replacing Bob Apiza now at fullback. It'll be second down and eight. The ball at the Michigan State 47-yard line. Washington split to the right. And off goes to Jones, and he is to the 48 or 49-yard line. Kevin Hardy and Pete Duranko. Along with John Horney and Jim Lynch. Washington has picked up 760 yards. That's a new season record for him, and uh, he has passed the 100 mark in his career of pass receptions here. Well, we might have an opportunity to see him now with third down and seven, the ball at the... Michigan State 49-yard line, and Washington comes wide to the right. He's got single coverage over here again with O'Leary. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, goes back. He's looking for Washington, but being chased, he now throws it, and it's incomplete at the 40-yard line. Intended for Washington, broken up very nicely by Tom O'Leary and Dave Martin. Boy, Horning and, uh, and Rhodes really put a rush on him that time. The little guy had to hurry his pass and overthrew the mark. Nick Kenny will be in to punt again for Michigan State. Kicking from where he does with that good strong leg, he has the advantage of being able to punt that ball near the Notre Dame goal line without going over, perhaps, which he did a few moments ago on the last series of plays. There's the snap, there's the kick, and it's another beauty. High end over end. Taken by Shane, and he's dropped immediately back on the 17-yard line. Shane wanted to try and return that, but no dice. As the entire Michigan State forward wall was down there, Tony Connie and Gene Washington, the first two men to hit Tom Shane. Well, Irish have the ball this time, a little farther out, in the shadow of their own goal, at their 14. 38 yards on the kick. First and 10, Notre Dame from their own 13-yard line. O'Brien calls the signals, gets the ball. Keeps it himself now, runs over right tackle, and it gets to the 15-yard line where he's dragged down by Webster. <laughs> Webster playing an outstanding game for Michigan State this afternoon. Drake Garrett coming in now, replacing a tackle. Garrett is a defensive secondary man. He replaces Nick Jordan, number 72, a tackle. As Michigan State goes into a different type of defensive setup. It's second down and nine. The ball at about the 14 and a half. O'Brien calls the signals, gets the ball. He's back to pass. He looks, he throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for number 85, Jim Seymour at the 22-yard line. Seymour was open momentarily, but the pass was thrown just a little bit late, and Jim Summers was able to recover and knock the ball down. That was unusual in one regard. Flyer was down here. He was double teamed. I think Coley wanted him as his prime target. Saw that he was covered and tried to hit Jim, but Jim couldn't get make the connection. Big play, third down and nine. The ball at the Notre Dame, 14 and a half yard line. O'Brien gets the football, rolls to his left now. He looks, he throws, and it's way over the head of Jim Seymour, who was wide open. Intended for Seymour at the 30 yard line. There wasn't anyone within 10 yards of him. The ball was overthrown by Coley O'Brien. Well, Michigan State will get another shot now with seven minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the game. Kevin Hardy will be in to kick for Notre Dame. Wouldn't surprise me to see Michigan State try and block this kick. There's the snap. Good one this time. They're coming. Gets the kick away. It's a good spiral this time. Beautiful kick. Fair catch call for at the 48-yard line of Michigan State by Alan Brenner. Clock is stopped with the score. Notre Dame 10 and Michigan State 10. Michigan State has the football. First down, 10 yards to go from their own 48-yard line. The score is tied 10-10 between Notre Dame and the Spartans of State, and there are 7 minutes and 34 seconds remaining in this football game. Kevin Hardy, the big Notre Dame tackle, has punted seven times in this ball game for 288 yards, an average of 41. That clock up there with 7 minutes and 34 seconds 
all of a sudden becomes the most important element in this football game that's tied at 10 and 10. Michigan State out of the huddle now. Up to the line of scrimmage, first and 10 from their own 48. Jimmy Ray hands the ball back to Lee, and he is stopped at about the 48 or 49-yard line of Notre Dame. Jim Lynch, John Pergine, and Tom Rhodes make the stop for the Irish. Gain of three, it's second and seven. Ball at the 49 of the Irish. Out of the huddle they come. Spartans with the ball. Lee gets it. Ray, I should say, gets back, throws it over the center. Incomplete intended for number 34, Dwight Lee. Defending on the play was John Horney along with John Pergine. So we'll have a third and seven situation. I thoroughly believe that all the eyes in this stadium were on, uh, on the end going down that time. Gene Washington, because he was streaking down the sidelines. Jimmy Ray for Michigan State has completed six of 15 passes, good for 124 yards. Washington has caught five of those, good for 113. Big play now for the Spartans, third and seven from the Notre Dame 49-yard line. Jimmy Ray goes back to pass. He's being chased. He looks, he throws, and it's intercepted by Shane of Notre Dame at the 50-yard line. Jimmy, Tommy Shane moved in front of the intended receiver, Dwight Lee and pick that football off and gives Notre Dame field position at the 50-yard line. You can almost read Shane's mind on that. When he saw that pass in flight, he had his mind made up to it. The only thing is he's a little frustrated that his momentum carried him out of bounds and into the Michigan State fence. He wanted to go all the way. All right, Notre Dame's football. It's spotted just inside the Michigan State 50-yard line. First and 10, Coley O'Brien hands the ball to Blyer, and he's to the 45-yard line of Michigan State where he's brought down by Thornhill. Coley O'Brien, the quarterback, he gets the snap. He goes back to pass, being chased, throws down the center, but it's incomplete at the 30-yard line. A big rush that time was put on by Thornhill, and he really dropped O'Brien after he threw the ball. It was intended right down the middle for Rocky Blyer, who was wide open, actually, but there was too much of a rush put on the quarterback, O'Brien. He did not have time to set and throw. It's third down and six, we'll call it, at the 45 of Michigan State. Now a big play for Notre Dame. O'Brien calls the signals. There's the snap. He goes back to pass. He throws, and it's incomplete was intended on the far side of the field for Rocky Blyer. Big rush that time. Actually, it was a screen pass to the right. Chatlos put on a big rush. He's the defensive left end in there now for Michigan State. So big Kevin Hardy will come in to punt for the Irish now with six minutes and two seconds remaining in this football game. Alan Brenner will go back deep for the Spartans. Hardy standing at his own 41-yard line. Moves back now to the 40. There's the snap. Good snap this time. The kick is away, and it's a beauty. Angle for the corner, however, it's going to go in the end zone. And it does. 45-yard kick that time by Kevin Hardy. So the Spartans get another chance now. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Boy, and what a football game this has been. No matter who wins... They'll be talking about this one for a long time to come. In the if category, if Cody O'Brien had about two more seconds on each of those last pass plays, it might have made a big difference in this football game at this particular moment. And you have to give credit to that hard-charging Michigan State defensive line for not giving O'Brien time. It's first and ten, Michigan State from their own 20-yard line. Washington split wide to the right. Ray back to pass. He looks, he throws, and it's intercepted by Shane at the 45. He's down to the 40, to the 30, to the 25, and out of bounds at the 18-yard line of Michigan State. Tommy Shane has just intercepted another pass for Notre Dame, and the Irish have the football at the Michigan State 8-yard line. 18-yard line. Correction. Well, how the fortunes can change. 
And they've changed again. Here we go at the 18-yard line. 31-yard return, Frank. I'm sorry. That's a 31-yard right. return. By Shane, it's first and 10. Notre Dame at the 18 of State. And Conjar gets the ball over right tackle. He's to the 16 or 17-yard line. Jeff Richardson, Pat Gallinaw, making the stop along with Webster and Thornhill, who have played an outstanding game for the Spartans today. Well, it took the Irish a little while to figure out the uh, angle on those passes, but Chain has done it twice. It's second down and about nine. The ball at the 16 and a half yard line as Shane gets the ball, hands to Dave Haley, who has dropped for a big loss back to the 25 yard line. Bubba Smith and Chuck Thornhill in to make the stop for the Spartans. Of about seven on the play. I just got to say, looking ahead and uh, making a guess, Jim, they're midway between the sideline markers. I'll be interested to see. That's a good field goal range if they can, uh, you know, if they can't roll up the yardage on this third and 16 situation. Notre Dame takes a timeout now to regroup. Sheen has put Notre Dame in position twice now with key interceptions for the Irish. The ball is spotted at the Michigan State 24-yard line, where it'll be third down and about 17 yards to go for Notre Dame. Well, everybody was looking forward to this as being the outstanding game of the year, the outstanding game of the decade, and some so far as to say the outstanding game of the century, and these two ball clubs have not let them down one little bit. Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 10, four minutes and 49 seconds remaining on the clock. Notre Dame has possession, third down and 16 yards to go at the Michigan State 24-yard line. Coley O'Brien, who had to come in as uh, Hanratty was injured early in the game. Coley has been directing the Irish quite handily, and uh, the little guy has got a big job on his shoulders right now. Certainly has, Frank. Third down, 16 yards to go, and Frank Crenitti has come in at right halfback for Notre Dame, replacing Dave Haley. Come the Irish, Coley O'Brien at the Michigan State 24 with third and 16. He calls the signal. He goes back to pass. He looks. He throws. And it's short, incomplete at the 15-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Check that. No flag on the play. The pass was short because it was batted. Well, we'll have a fourth down situation. The ball at the 24-yard line. Fourth and 16. Joe will be attempting what will amount to a 41-yard field goal because he's kicking it from the 31. There's the snap. It's spotted. It's up in the air. And it's no good. It's off to the right. It had the distance, but it was off to the right. And Michigan State will take over at their own 20-yard line. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. takes over with four minutes 31 seconds remaining in this football game they have the ball first and 10 from their own 20 gene washington flank far to the right this time dave martin goes up on his head now the handoff goes to the fullback and he's dropped immediately by pete duranko check that it wasn't the fullback it was clinton jones and duranko dropped him back at the 14 and a half yard line a loss of six yards on the play and talk about an All-American football player, or two All-Americans for that matter, Clinton Jones and Pete Duranko, both playing an outstanding football game here this afternoon for their respective teams. Jones has only been able to pick up 15 yards in nine carries today, so Notre Dame has him pretty well solved. Second down, 15 and a half yards to go from the Michigan State, 14 and a half. Back to pass, goes Ray, he looks for Washington, way over his head, incomplete and out of bounds. Duranko, a great rush along with Tom Rhodes. Jimmy Ray not getting nearly the time he did in the first half. They've really got the rush on him now. Third down. 15 and a half yards to go for a first down. Joe Presbicki comes back in the ballgame at left tackle now, replacing Rominski. 
Big play now for Michigan State again. I was just going to say, as keyed up and as tense as these football players are, there's been a minimum of mistakes this afternoon. Washington wide to the right again. Third and 15. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. It's right up the center to Jones. And he's to the 25, to the 30. Or just shy of the 30-yard line. He'll be just shy of a first down. That was Cavender. If I said Jones, it was Regis Cavender. Right up the center, he was stopped by John Pergine. Brother, here we got a fourth down in inches. And we're going to have a measurement. Jimmy Ray exercises his prerogative here. He can call for that measurement. He can ask the officials for it. It seems obvious that the shy of the first down, but... Uh, he exercises his option just to prove that it's about a foot short. About a foot short, Frank, you're exactly right. Give some credit to the fine blocking in the middle of that Michigan State line that time. Tony Conti, Larry Smith, and Dave Teklin. Another bit of uh, conjecture on that, it gives Michigan State a timeout without being charged for one. They have the ball, fourth and a foot. The ball just shy of the 30-yard line. Jimmy Ray calls the signals. Quarterback sneak. And he's got the first down outside the 30-yard line. Duranko and Lynch make the stop. They had his head pushed back to the north side of that 30-yard line, but the second effort by the little guy got it over another foot. And Michigan State now has first down, 10 yards to go, just across their own 30. The clock shows three minutes and eight seconds, seven seconds remaining. Clock is running. It's an important period in this ballgame for sure. The ball is just outside the Michigan State 30-yard line where it's first down, 10 yards to go for the Spartans. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Clinton Jones, and he's dropped shy of the 30-yard line. Over there is Kevin Hardy, Alan Page, and John Horney along with Jim Lynch. Boy, what a football game both of these teams have played this afternoon. A loss of two and a half yards on the play. The ball is at the 28-yard line of Michigan State, second and 12, we'll call it. Out of the huddle now come the Spartans. Two minutes, 22 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Washington flank wide to the right. Two-man coverage on him now. Back to pass goes the quarterback. He throws it over the center. He completes it to the 35-yard line. Catching that ball was number 86, Alan Brenner. He was stopped by John Pergine and Tom Shane. And Shane was wrestling him for that football all the way down to the turf. Notre Dame wants to get that football. One minute, 55 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. The ball at the 36-yard line of Michigan State. Out of the huddle they come with third and five. Brenner is flanked to the left this time. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. He swings to his left. He throws. And it's incomplete at the 45-yard line of Notre Dame, intended for Brenner. Defending for Notre Dame was Jim Smithberger. One minute, 36 seconds, showing on that scoreboard clock, and Michigan State has the football with a fourth and five from their own 36-yard line, and Dick Kenny comes in, I would assume, to punt the ball for the Spartans. We've been in on cliffhangers before, Jim. A minute and 36 seconds remaining to play. Michigan State must give up the ball. Tom Shane goes back deep for Notre Dame. There's the snap, a little bit low. However, he gets the kick away, and it's another fine one. Fair catch call for by Shane. He fumbles the ball. He recovers it, however, for Notre Dame. Wow. Some hard breathing here in the stands by both fans of Notre Dame and Michigan State. That was kind of a floater. Shane fumbled the ball, however, was able to recover it. So Notre Dame will have possession with one minute, 24 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. First down, 10 yards to go from their own 30. If every young man had his heart in his mouth, I'm sure Shane did on that play. All right, out of the huddle they come. Coley O'Brien is the quarterback for Notre Dame. Seymour is flanked wide to the right. Rolling to his right is O'Brien. He's going to run with it. He's to the 30, to the 35-yard line and dropped over on the far side of the field by Thornhill. One minute left on that scoreboard clock. Second down and six from the 34. 52 seconds now, 50 seconds as Notre Dame comes out of the huddle with second and six. 
O'Brien barks the signals. It's the draw play to Blyer. He's out to the 35 to the 36 yard line. Seconds ticking away. George Webster made the stop. And Michigan State takes the timeout. Well, how can you pick a hero out of this ball game? It's been team play on both sides of the fence. Michigan State and Notre Dame with their highly touted defenses playing the beautiful game today. The offenses maneuvering when they can, but the defenses have been containing them. Notre Dame, I would dare say, had the uh, had the harder uh, goal in mind when Hanratty got hurt. They had uh, lost Eddie before the ball game ever began. Gedeke got hurt, but uh, if I were to pick out one single fella out there, I'd have to toss it up between Jimmy Ray of Michigan State, who's done a monumental job for them, and Coley O'Brien, who has stepped into the breach and done beautifully for Notre Dame. And Frank, talking about Jimmy Ray of Michigan State, he's carried the ball this afternoon 21 times for 77 yards and completed seven passes of 19 for 132. Now, Coley O'Brien stepping in for the first time for the injured Terry Hanratty has completed seven passes out of 19, good for 101 yards. It's Notre Dame's ball, third and four, from their own 31-yard line. It's Conjar with the football, and he's to the 40-yard line. He's very close to that first down. Great stop over there by Chuck Thornhill on Larry Conjar. 18, 17 seconds as the clock continues to go. And Michigan State calls a timeout once again. The football is just shy of the 40-yard line. The end of that chain across the way is right on the 40-yard line. So it's fourth down in just inches to go for Notre Dame. 15 seconds show on the clock. Fourth down and those inches to go. And across the way, the uh, Michigan State Spartans checking over their defensive signals. Also making sure that the scoreboard clock is as uh, correct as the official's clock on the field. Notre Dame, across the way, Eric Parsegi and his coaches huddling. They're going to send in a play for sure. They've got a white shirt over there ready to come in. And let's see what Notre Dame will come up here. It is Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 10. 15 seconds remaining on the clock. And Notre Dame has possession. Right down to the wire. The number one and number two teams in the nation. Playing even Stephen football this Saturday afternoon from Spartan Stadium. And may I remind you again that Jimmy Morse and I will be at Los Angeles next Saturday for Notre Dame and Southern Cal. Notre Dame is out of the huddle, and they're going to go for it with fourth and inches. Coley O'Brien, the quarterback, gets the snap. It's a quarterback sneak. He's got the first down over the 40-yard line. Rigner, Swatlin, and Monty in the center of that line driving that Michigan State forward wall back. Ten seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Notre Dame with a first down at their own 40-yard line. Well, it's probably a ridiculous remark to make, but not one of this record crowd has departed this stadium this Saturday afternoon. There's going to be the doggonest traffic jam you ever saw trying to get out of here today. <laughs> Boy, and you certainly can't take anything away from these two finely tuned and finely coached football teams of Duffy Doherty of Michigan State and Ara Parsegian of Notre Dame. Notre Dame has the football with 10 seconds left in the game, first and 10 from their own 41, and the score is tied 10-10. You can tell what Duffy's doing. He's got a man deep in a single safety. Coley O'Brien gets the ball. He's being chased. He's brought down back at the 34-yard line. Coming in there in a hurry for Michigan State to make that stop was O'Brien. Check that. Was Bubba Smith on O'Brien, I should say. Six seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Now it'll be second and 16. Bubba was beautiful. As soon as he made the tackle, he got up and is making the signal for timeout to the official. He wanted to stop that clock, which he did at six seconds remaining. Seconds, which could be a very big six seconds, or which could see Notre Dame just use up the clock and settle for a 10 to 10 tie. Out of the huddle now comes Notre Dame. Second down, 16 yards to go from their own 34 yard line. 
Haley and Conja are back. Quarterback sneak by O'Brien. He moves outside the 35 to the 38-yard line. The scoreboard says that's the end of the football game, and the fans are down there, but the officials are still talking. That is the end of the football game now at Spartan Stadium with the final score, Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 10. Game of the year here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing with Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 10 all tied up. And I suppose if there's one fellow who is a little bit more disappointed than anybody else here today, it would have to be Joe Azaro. Azaro, with about six minutes left, had an opportunity to put Notre Dame into the lead with a field goal from about the 31-yard line. The kick had the distance, but it was just a little bit off to the right, and that was the uh, equalizer in the ball game. Notre Dame 10 and Michigan State 10. There was no scoring in the first quarter. Cavender scored on a four-yard run for Michigan State. Kenny's try for point was good, making it Michigan State 7 to nothing. Then with five minutes and 47 seconds left in the first half, Kenny connected with a 47-yard field goal, making the score Michigan State 10 to nothing. However, Notre Dame struck back in the uh, second quarter with four minutes and 30 seconds remaining as Gladio took in a 34-yard pass from O'Brien. Azaro converted, making it Notre Dame 7, Michigan State 10. And with 14 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, Joe Azaro kicked the field goal from 20 yards out, tying the ball game up. But as we mentioned, with about six minutes left in the game, Azaro had another opportunity but uh, even though the kick had the distance, it did not go through the uprights, and the score stays then as now with Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 10.